Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is, spar- this is part of the Scubana e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. And that's why we have Travis. Scubana is a software platform to manage your entire e-commerce operation. And today we have Travis Romine, founder of Sharp Commerce. His company is a group of e-commerce ninjas helping with customer engagement, retention, and advanced marketing, and much more, which we'll talk about. He took sales from $100 per day to over $15,000 per day over a 10-year period at Paradise Fibers that he co-founded, which they grew to one of the top performing businesses in the needlecraft industry. Now, Travis, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me, man. You know, that's the polished introduction. The real entrepreneurial introduction is when we are talking before we hit record is Paradise Fibers and Travis, $50,000 debt on credit cards, garbage shopping cart in 2005, worked 60 to 80 hour weeks for eight years to take over the world for Needlecraft, right? Take over the world in the name of yarn. Yes, exactly. How about that? Is that better? It sounds less like, yeah, attacking. All right, so, that's <laughs> exactly. I don't know if you can really attack needlecraft. I don't want to. Well, I want to sound because there's some people that are going to seek this out. Like, there's some hardcore yarnies that like have found me after this thing and really on social media and whatever. Because I, I mean, I had long conversations with a lot of these ladies, man. I mean, yeah. you're selling love, and so. Anyway, they, they found me and they'll they'll find this dude eventually and they'll be I don't want them to be like, Travis just sold yarn to make money. And you know, it's not it, man. No, I mean taking over the It really world. wasn't. So we'll talk about some of the big milestones of the company and what you do at Sharp Commerce for other companies as well. But I always like to include a fun fact before we dig in to some of those how you boosted the sales and mistakes and other things. You have a lot of interesting, fun facts, and one of them, uh, you have a love for mustard, which I thought was interesting. I, what, what I, do you I like don't know to- where that comes from. It's I love it, man. I really do. Any kind. I don't care what brand it is. Yellow is the best. It's not anything fancy. Just yellow mustard, man. It's delicious. Um, and also, you put out a music video about dental floss dispensers. I did. I did. And uh, what's the yeah, story that was behind a, that? All right. So uh, that was a, a sort of entrepreneurial project that I partnered with my dad on. And um, he has this this pocket floss device, this little uh, sort of like a, a reel-to-reel tape. Uh, and it's a little it's kind of a floss dispenser, but it sort of comes back in the other side. So you, you push a button, release some floss on one side and you reel it back up when you're done on the other. Now, when you've got this this floss extended, you've got this loop of floss, it'll lock for you. Um, and the, you kind of pull against it, and you can use it. You don't have to wind it around your fingers. Yeah. No more purple fingertips, I whatever, gotcha. right? Yeah. Shameless plug I for knew, pocket floss. I knew it would have an e-commerce application. This music video would have an e-commerce application to it. Did yeah. it help you sell more floss? Um, no. no. That project was a flop. Okay. Um, but, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, you make mistakes and you learn from them. Um, anyway, it's still out there. You can find them on Amazon if you want to buy one and check it out. But they're, they're, uh, the video, uh, it's kinda, it was kind of crazy. Like, I, I made this song about it just because I'm a weird dude. And I, I thought it would be fun to just make a pocket floss song. I was just living this thing for a couple of years, you know, messing with it, trying to sell this thing. Um, and, I mean, I'm approaching Walgreens and Walmart and these, these big, you know, oral care distributors and retailers. Um, and it was quite a journey. So I, I wrote this song about it and I have, I've got a buddy in uh, Idaho, Drew Allen, uh, at Pepper Shock uh, Productions. And I went to video school with him. Hmm. Well, he calls me up one day and he's kind of a weird dude too. And he's like, Hey, we're doing this, this, uh, 48 hour film festival. And do you got a song? You got a song, man. I know you got a song. Let's do it. Cause I've got music video. We've got 48 hours to get this thing done. Um, what do you got? Give me a song. And you know, I, I played him the song over the phone and he bought me a plane ticket and I flew over the next morning and like in costume in the suit that if you look up pocket floss, you'll see 
I'm, I mean, I got the fake mustache on the airport. I'm getting questioned by security. They're like, dude, what's up with the mustache? What are you doing? And I told them, and they're like, that's too weird. He couldn't make that up. He's not, he's not going to blow this plane up, man. He's good. Um, what worked when approaching those big stores like Walgreens and Oral Care? The story, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and we didn't really have a lot of success, but um, we had a little success uh, regionally here uh, in Seattle, in Spokane, mm-hmm. yeah. um, with uh, the Walgreens chain. And we were able to get them in, you know, like 20 some odd stores. Mm-hmm. something like that and really it was the story about hey this is my dad's thing check it out we're local whatever and it was like wasn't really empathy but it was you know they, there was this connection there they're willing to take a little risk yeah it was like the local connection and, and we kind of we you know we told him the story and it was legit mm-hmm. um this is my dad's you know it's passion uh, for this device and he had thought about it for a long time took him a ton of time to develop it figure it out and then he finally made the molds and plastic injection molding he figured all this crap out and the 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 thing is pretty cool yeah you know and anyway that was probably it you know the the story it really it kind of got it into the stores um and the thing that we really failed on was having marketing to push it we re- back then i i really didn't understand that either yeah. this is early to like 2004 ish something like that mm-hmm. and uh, just before I did the Paradise Project. And we just didn't understand. Like, we're going in and pitching it to these guys, and they're like, okay, so how are you going to promote it? How are people going to want to buy this? We're like, we'll put it on the shelf. They'll just come and buy it, right? Nah. Mm. At the end of it, these guys come back. Towards the end of the project, um, these guys came back and said, hey, you know what? We'll put it on our shelf. 50 grand a slot mm. for, you know, however how many much stores. Sl- how many of those things do you have to, to sell? Numbers didn't <laughs> crunch, right, exactly. Dude. They don't Numbers work didn't out. crunch. And mm-hmm. if everyone's wondering why Travis's sound sounds so good, I mean, you've had clients uh, like Sir Mix-A-Lot and um, Zombie Games and Fandango and other. So what did you do for Sir Mix-A-Lot? Uh, Mix-A-Lot, I did uh, post-production uh, editing, and uh, I was a creative director on uh, Shh, Don't Tell Him That. It was sort of a compilation of a lot of his stuff. Um, and I was, I was creative director on that. It's kind of cool uh, for the short period that I was a creative director in Seattle. Yeah. Um, Working at an ad agency over there. Nice. That was fun, man. Nice. Good times. Yeah. Your sound sounds uh, sounds great. Um, so I want to go back early on, then we'll go on your e-commerce path. But um, where are you from? Where did you grow up? And what was the big influence growing up? Spokane, man. Um, I was born in Spokane, and I, I uh, was raised in uh, the Bay Area until I was 13 and moved mm. back to Spokane. Just couldn't get away. Um, cause your family has a farm these days, right? They do. Uh, yeah. they've got some sheep and it's kind of strange They're out and out in the middle of nowhere and they've got a bunch of sheep and that's my, that my dad's history really isn't farming per se or, or animals like that. They yeah. just kind of got into that about, uh, 10 years ago or so hmm. kind of when they started getting into the yarn thing. Yeah. So what did you want to be when you grew up? I still haven't. I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. In the I days of San Francisco, that. I mean, did you want to do something? Did you want to create your own product? Were you an entrepreneur at the time, or what were you into? I think I've always been into music, and mm-hmm. that's that's been a through line in my life. I yeah. still, you know, play music here and there, and yeah, um, yeah I have a problem growing up, I guess. Getting so, when did your e-commerce path start? Um. Okay, so that was in about 2005. Um, and my dad had uh, this weird business that was kind of on its head. He had gotten into it because uh, my mom and my sister liked the fiber, and I didn't know what fiber meant. I, didn't know, I had no idea what he was talking about. And I was in Seattle at the time um, that I heard about this, and, and I came back over to see them, and they had converted their, their house um, out in the middle of nowhere. It's actually a trailer. Uh, with their sheep or whatever, they've converted this thing into like this weird online business, but it really wasn't much. And it was in trouble. And I could tell it was in trouble. And I talked to some other people about it. And that's kind of went to check it out. And they really didn't have any background in marketing at all, or warehousing or e commerce or anything. They just needed help. And so I'm like, you know, the computer guy, they didn't really understand, you know, any of that stuff. And I did, um, to a degree, and I understood the marketing part of it, uh, just because I was fresh out of you know 
working with a lot of different clients uh, as a creative director and uh, at the Fluid Night ad agency in Seattle. So what happened is I got sucked into this yarn vortex where I just said, you know what, dad, let me help you with this thing. And he was like, thank God, someone's going to help me. I don't know what to do. This is great. Um, and so I pulled up a moving van and got this piles, piles and piles of yarn and, and animal hair, which is fiber, I learned later, um, basically, unspun animal hair. And I hauled that out to um, uh, the space that I was able to get behind the recording studio that I was renting. Hmm. And so it was right next door. I could record bands at night and, uh, you know, figure out this e-commerce thing uh, during the day. So what did you do with the stuff at the space? Did you just dump it in the space or you organize it in a certain fashion? What were you doing with it? Compared to what that place is now and how it's how well it's set up now, I would yeah. consider, yes, we did basically dump it in there. <laughs> um, we had some just makeshift shelves and we tried to do location codes, but we didn't have the right software. We didn't know what we were supposed to be doing. And funny enough, um, Nick, one of my main guys, Nick Sanders, um, a.k.a. Coco, he... He's one of my ninjas. He's a great, yeah. great dude. And he He's a was, business system manager at Sharp Commerce, right? Ah, okay. Yeah. He's, he's a maniac, man. He is just awesome with researching new products and software and figuring it out and implementing systems. Mm -hmm. And he had no experience at that point. This is like 2005-ish. He was an intern at the recording studio and really hard worker and good dude. And he was actually like a paid intern. Like these people had sent me this kid, you know? And they said, we'll pay, you know, four grand or something if you train them in audio stuff and fill out some whatever. So it was, it was a weird relationship meeting this guy. And, uh, but he was a really cool dude. And we got along. And so this opportunity came up. So like the first couple of days, it's me and Nick locked in the shop till like three or four in the morning. We're barely taking breaks. We're figuring it out, just going crazy, adding products, starting up this new website on Volution, actually, and uh, converting it from an HTML website with this just oh, god-awful cart. Um, that was, you know, spitting out like a, a text file, an individual text file into a folder somewhere you had to download and with the credit card number raw in it, totally, absolutely not PCR compliant by any means. That wasn't even the thing then. Pretty ugly um, state of things. And that's that. I mean, that was really like the seed to all this uh, getting the Volution uh, cart, which I, I have to say, man, those guys did a great job of kind of training us and getting us going out of the out of the gate we took advantage of a lot of their kind of turnkey services yeah so what was some of the initial traction that you got what did you do one of the biggest things that we did initially um was google shopping hmm. and it was like google base or frugal back then and that none of our competitors were very tech savvy mm -hmm. um and a lot of the stuff's mom and pa and some of these people have been around for a long time they didn't weren't necessarily into the website thing a whole bunch they were actually still doing like mail order with the little catalogs and stuff uh and so when we came on and we're we're exploring and exploiting the software as much as we could uh like with volution uh it's got this the feed generator built into it we were mm -hmm. shooting this feed to google base and just conquering it's it was free back then mm. um and so we've got all these listings out there. It's basically pay-per-click that now what you'd call PLAs. This is the early days of PLAs right. and it was free and we were just killing it. And that's, we built a lot of taking advantage of those kind of loopholes early on, man. It meant so much. So what was the other software on the market at the time for shopping carts? So there's Volusion, is there anything else? What were people using? I don't, I, you know, back then, because you eventually know. moved to Magento, right? Huge move. Yeah. That was significant. Yeah. Yeah. At what point did you decide to do that? Um, I think that was in like 2010 or 11, maybe. I think it was. So you were on Volusion for a while. Uh, yeah, we were quite a while, and it would it took us probably six months to get it or a year to get moved over properly from Volusion uh, to Magento. It's a huge migration. I mean, it's a whole different way of thinking when you've got uh, your products are in the spreadsheet and maybe a couple different tables in Volusion, and then you're you're going over to Magento, which has got layered navigation, which is basically you've got true filtering where you're filling out attributes. So you've got a particular product uh, set, an attribute set, and you've got attributes within that set. They're nested. And you say, okay, so this is like a camera. Well, 
one attribute might be like the lens it comes with and uh, other you know details about a particular camera or a specific product um, type basically is what an attribute set is and so we had to kind of get our head wrapped around that and fill out all these attributes for you know 15,000 products and set them up properly um, and a lot of people don't do that they don't take advantage of that with Magenta which is really crazy and that's one of the things that we uh, at Sharp Commerce you know we're looking out for and finding um, ways for people to better present their products you know with whatever platform they happen to use whether it's Magenta or something else Travis was it called Paradise Fibers back then was it or was it a different name no, it's always been called. It's Paradise always Fibers. Paradise Fibers. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the first things that worked really well was the the PLA. What else worked? Oh boy. Um, okay. So realistically, that was a huge thing until, I, and I think once we got we got hooked up with Bronto, mm-hmm. and um, those guys, uh, I went ahead and I said, you know, I don't know enough about email marketing. Train me. I'll pay you. Went through the service and they they did a lot for us. Um, it was like a three. It was only like three months, maybe six months. And they'll hold your hand and give you uh, a lot of different ideas on what kind of sales to run with your, uh, you know, and they're all customized to you. It's not just boilerplate. They did a great job of kind of setting us up to win with email marketing, and that turned into a huge revenue stream. Mm-hmm. Um, just really taking advantage of uh, trying to send people what they wanted, and you know, segment larger groups of people, um, things like that. Yeah. So, what did you learn? What was working with the email marketing? Um, so I read one of your posts, and basically, it's like, uh, don't just send out sales coupons. <laughs> That's not the definition of email marketing. Yeah. Well, okay. So there's two parts to that. Yeah. People want deals. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. You get it. Now, but they also want, um, you know, there's also, you can, you can give them entertainment. You can give them uh, value added emails. Yeah. How to videos. Now, down towards the home stretch, um, uh, last few years I was there, we were doing segmented uh, batches of customers where we were we were doing these uh, value added emails like um, here's a s- special spinning technique uh, on this specific spinning wheel to get them interested in the wheel yeah. and to give them some information on that. Now we would only send that to people that were spinners. Yeah, don't send it to your knitters. Give people what they want. And it took a lot of time to make these videos. We had an expert in house that would yeah. do it. I I even made you can look up my dying video on there. I learned how to dye. It was I had a blast. Not literally dye, but dye dye fabric. Yeah. yeah okay. Dye with color. <laughs> a lot of friends made fun of me. I had a lot of my rock star buddies were cracking <laughs> up. I got a lot of emails. Um, but it was fun, man. And and uh, it, it was it's cool because I'm in the mix answering the phone some days and I get I was talking to people, oh you're I want to buy this dye. You're the person who made that video. It it helps all those kind of things drive it home with your customers. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're doing those kinds of things, you're like, well, who's really going to watch this? Well, guess what? You segment out the people that would like these types of yeah. uh, value added emails or content and shoot it to them. And then you connect with them. And it's not just like you're blasting out crap to all your entire audience. You respect your audience and they're going to pay attention. And that's, that's a really a big key to um, email marketing. And, and once you kind of figure out that approach, I think the rest of it really falls into place. So how did you segment what works well if people are like, well, I just put everyone on the same list. I'm not even sure what to do. It's really common. Uh, yeah. You need to have some kind of advanced software to do that. You're going to have to have a decent partner, yeah. whether it's Bronto um, or Dot Mailer. Dot Mailer has been great. Those guys are awesome. Those that, They're probably my f- – ah, sorry, Bronto. They're probably my favorite, although I love both you guys. Um, Dot Mailer – and Magento, uh, Bronto as well. They have really tight integration. I worked with both those companies to improve their integration yeah. um, just because I'm kind of a loud mouth when it comes to getting what I want with the software. And yeah. those companies I have a great relationship actually with now because I, I pushed them so hard and they're like, gosh, what does Travis want now, man? And they finally figured out like, this guy's actually adding a lot of value to our software right. and our customers like it. Um, or at least that's what they told me. So maybe so I'd stop calling. And so, um, but no, they're they're really cool people, and both of those companies, Dot Mailer and Brano, and they they ended up um, really advancing a lot of the integration and segmentation uh, for the Magento uh, web platform. And what what we were doing is yeah. 
we would say, you know, hey, you buy, what's really cool is if you set up your database right with Mageno, you do like a, a attribute set, which is like a product type, okay? Use that to segment a whole group of people really fast. You say, hey, you bought this. Well, I know you're going to like this. We mm. set up rules. You don't even have to like, you can automate all this stuff. So It's got, because it's so close, uh, tight-knit with uh, Magento that you could do that with those two, yeah. Well, and it's the way if you set up Magento right. A lot There's mm. people out there that are doing integrations with Magento that don't understand it. Um, it's it's tough. I'm actually working with a client right now. We're roadblocked. And um, it's been, we've had to do a lot of workarounds just to do some integration. And they basically, they're not using the layer navigation like it's supposed to be. And the, the um, uh, attribute sets. Attribute sets are super powerful. If you set those up right, like I said, like kind of how I mentioned before, where you're Attribute sets a product type, and you fill out all your attributes for each product type. Uh, it's a little bit of work. It's a lot of work, actually. It's just a lot of work on the front end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On the up front, essentially. Yeah. And and once you get that put together, then you're using that stuff to filter. You're using that stuff to segment your customers. Yeah. And you're using that stuff to you can present all those things on your website as specifications for that product. So you're it, you you get so much out of it once you figure that out. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's absolutely worth doing, and uh, it's a great way to go. So you can really laser focus and segment. So if someone you know bought some, I guess what's a, what's an example of a a special or an email that worked really well because you had segmented. Okay. Um, wow, man, this is going to get me going down a road here. All right. Yeah. So where to start? There's a, a with like Paradise Fibers. There was a. a huge group of people that were spinners, right? And those people that are making yarn from spinning wheels with the raw animal hair and they're spinning it right. um, and making yarn. So those people, we knew they were going to love a club of some kind, mm -hmm. uh, like a like a wine club. But we, we created a fiber of the month club thing. Right. So we sent them fiber and every month with a gift and work deals to get gifts with vendors uh, so there's added value there. We got super good deals on that stuff. And just throw that in, free gift, um, and write them a nice letter and which fibers are which. We also put on each fiber best uses for. And so we, there's all this value add stuff that we always right. did there uh, as part of the system that, that my team designed. Um, so we solicited all these spinners. We knew, the, grabbed that segment, solicited those guys, said, hey, come join our club. We know you're spinning. And guess what else? We'll give you 10% off supplies from here on out just be part of our club and mm -hmm. let us solicit you um and send out fiber to your door every month we know you love it and we made it really advantageous so there was a lot of value with the fiber and so we didn't we're not trying to uh, gouge these people so if they tried to buy them individually it was a lot more than um you know what we were giving them essentially they would get a really good the value was there yeah so and how they, do you, I mean, yeah. it went crazy. That was a terrific promotion, and that continued to go. We do that, you know, periodically to to gain customers on that. And that was one of the other really big uh, successful pieces of Paradise Fibers was the clubs. So that, was that, was a subscription, that was a subscription, right? Right, right. Yeah. And we we actually custom base or custom build um, uh, had our developers custom build out a, a club recurring billing system for us uh, through Magento. And it was wow. just, it was, it was amazing. It turned out really, really great. Um, and it was really easy to manage. Customers can manage it themselves. Um, so they had full control. They, you, you can yeah. sign up and bail out and rip us off because you're going to get a deal when you sign up. People didn't. They, yeah. These are, the, the customers are really cool. Um, I miss those customers, man. They're, they're a really good batch of people. Um, and, and there was, but anyway, so this was, uh, the clubs were just another way to like heighten the level of engagement that we had with our customers. Yeah. So tell me about the early, because the idea phase of that, what you ended up executing on probably was different from the initial conversations. Um, you know, what was the initial conversation? Because you said there's a subscription and then you gave them 10% off. Was that always the idea or did it go through a couple modifications when you were talking to your customers or with the other staff? Um. It all came together quick, mm -hmm. and this is when you're living it. Um, at a really, I mean, I'm talking up until the last couple of years, I was doing sixty to eighty hours a week. Yeah, um, leading by example, um, and just going, you know, hog wild. 
the other guys were trying to keep up. I mean, I had a lot of guys that worked at the yarn store, which is kind of strange. Um, but we had a, a great group, and those guys would be really interested in, in contributing, and we would have a weekly meeting. Um, so we'd do lots of brainstorming every week, right. uh, you know, and that's within just a few weeks, we'd flushed out pretty much the whole entire club. Yeah. Um, and we refined it by, um, you know, hey, we're going to throw in a three free gift. Let's give them like whatever, some tape measure or this or that, whatever. And we started increasing the value of the gifts. Um, you know, I was just pushing uh, a lot of the different vendors that I had personal relationships with, you know, building over a uh, long period of time of dealing right. with them. Just like, hey, man, what do you got to dump? What do you want to dump? Let's let's figure this out. And we'll get your name out there. These, these people yeah. would never buy your whatever product. And I'm going to go ahead and it, what, it's not necessarily a consumable. It's like a cross kind of promotion, promotion gift. sort of. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. So what made you decide to do that? Now that seems obvious because it's so popular with the Dollar Shave Club and all these other places but then that wasn't so obvious what made you decide to start that subscription uh club i think it's just i'm i'm just a genius pretty much <laughs> <laughs> no i don't know man we just stumbled onto it kind of when we were looking at segmentation and i think it might have been the segmentation actually segmentation um, it may have been uh I'm, i really don't know where it came from i'm just wondering we if just... it was like um because I know on the, your blog, you also talk about lifetime value. I don't know if there was like a lifetime value conversation, which led sure. to a subscription or a club, or maybe it was just kind of randomly came about. Because I think oftentimes we forget about this, you know, recurring revenue. Right. Um, an increasing lifetime value. Absolutely, man. And you're, you're keeping, that is a big part of it. Um, I'd like to say that, yeah, I orchestrated it based on that. I didn't even know what lifetime value was back then, hardly. It was like a report that was on some screen somewhere. And, At least uh, you had it on some screen somewhere. Yeah. Right. Um, yep, totally. Um, yeah, yeah. There were, I had some really robust reporting software that we used, um, and it hooked onto our order management system, and it was you know, customer life cycle or uh, customer lifetime value, the average customer lifetime value and how many times people were ordering. And, and these things are kind of uh, more on the top of people's tongues now, you know, marketers and, and people that are doing strategy. Yeah. But, you know, four or five years ago, not so much. How do you price that? How do you price a subscription? We priced it based off of what we would want to see if we were a customer and if we checked it out, if we went, you know what, you're getting this much of this product and this and that. We Three or four different products were being included. And if you go and price it out, you would see an incredible value. Mm -hmm. And that's what we wanted to give our customers. And we, I built in, I built that for a couple of reasons. I didn't want people ever disconnecting from us. And I understood the value, the, the lifetime value of the customer and yeah. really wanted to increase that and engage people and not have them bail out. Um, and I want them to like us. And it really was not, that's a pretty cheap way to make them like it. It's a lot harder to go out and try to get new customers and you know keep these guys on board. Right. Now the other thing is, when you got a club, um, you can throw in stuff in each order, man. Throw in, you know, leaflet, whatever, um, you know, sale flyer, whatever, and uh, you know what they like. You know they like fiber, so hook them up. You know, what was the cost of, of the club? What, did, what was the cost at the time? Like thirty five bucks or something, I think. Mm -hmm. Thirty five bucks a month, something like that. Yeah. So what else worked? The PLA, the email marketing, segmenting, the subscriptions. What else did you find really? I'm not, no pun intended. Drove the needle. Okay, so beyond that, figuring out ways for customers to stick to us. In general, yeah. once you start playing the game that way, yeah, um, with all the different channels you have, uh, we tried eBay for a while. We tried, you know, Amazon. We did Amazon, um, and eBay was definitely a different different breed of customer. Yeah, really They're wild, tricky. And I've heard this from a lot of other e-commerce um, gurus out there and, and retailers. I don't know why. What is it? Maybe what they're looking for used stuff. I don't know. Man, they're different. eBay customers are tough. I had I had so many nasty phone calls. It was depressing my staff. They're like, oh, another eBay person. And I'm like, no, they can't be right. Really? Come on. We're all upbeat, you know, a uh, good pile of folks here. And and don't be getting down on the poor eBay people. After a while, I got a couple calls too. I didn't get my stuff. I'm like, dude, it says it's delivered. And this is your second time. Like, stop. 
really? And you give them a second load. You know, they're go- they're double dipping, saying they didn't get their stuff. Mm. And when there's a lot of them, and you keep looking, and they're all eBay, and it's so weird. And all you know, a lot of angry. Uh, oh, there's one cent. They're two cents off on the invoice or something weird. Who cares, really? But it was weird. It, it was strange, and it was always eBay. Hmm. We ended up discontinuing eBay. Um, I'm sure there's, you know, eBay is wonderful for for a lot of people, but we had enough Not orders coming this. in through other channels, and it wasn't really worth it, man. Yeah. So you what know, platforms yeah, that, worked well? Amazon? How'd Amazon do? Oh, Amazon was good. It was great. I mean, that's turn and burn. You're not going to make a ton of money. I mean, you're paying out, you know, 15% after you take the... Um, Their fees and everything. Merchant, fee, merchant yeah. fee and, and everything. But realistically, you're going to pay 10% anyway on average if you're healthy with your marketing. So, you know, plus another 2 or 3% for merchant processing. So it's not that far off, really. Um, but you're not getting the branding. So that's what kind of that's the biggest thing that you I have. You don't own the customer. Yeah. No. I and mean, you can put something in the order, but Amazon frowns on it. They're not going to catch you, but you can do that. Um, it's still not. It's nothing like having to buy from your site. Um, and, and that's part of like the clubs and some of the other things to get people to stick to you. Once you try to, once you're once you're able to, um, I should you know the different mechanisms that you have in place. If you can get people to come back and buy from you again and try your website again and get used to it, so they know it's familiar, especially maybe your older customer base. Yeah. Um, you know, those guys—they're not super computer savvy, maybe, and they maybe even hate the computer. But if they're if they've got this, like, you open this channel for them where they can really easily order the things that yeah. they normally like to buy. You know, I mean, that's you've you created this pattern. Get them to come back. One way we did that was a rewards system. Mm. And yeah, tell me about that. Yeah. A lot of people do it. Um, a lot of people don't do it well. And there's things that you can do, um, like, you know, enclose in the actual, um, like in all the transactional emails and uh, as part of your email marketing campaigns, you can throw in throw in points in there and say, hey, you know what? Maybe someone's uh, only bought one time from you. You're going to give them points on that order. So if you shoot out an email, uh, Whatever, even just a transactional or whatever, some kind of a reminder, any kind of email that you can to them that they're going to open, and you say you got points in there. You've only got, you know, maybe you got five bucks in points, maybe you got forty cents in points. Who knows? But we were finding that people were opening these emails and going, you know, especially talking to them on the phone because we our staff was very close um, at the shop, and we would all share, you know, what's happening. And oh, hey, you know what? We're getting these calls now after we implemented this process well i don't i've got these points i've got to use these points um you know and and the customers didn't want them to expire and they would expire at you know 90 days or 120 days so they'd have plenty of time to use them depending on um the recurring uh purchasing cycle of most of our customers you Mm -hmm. know typically i think it was we ended up around 120 which people didn't get too upset about um where they would make you know multiple purchases in that period of time but that was a great way to get people coming back and keeping them engaged and kind of creating this uh, excuse to come back and even just buy a stupid tape measure or something. But they're going through the checkout process again. It's familiar to them again. And in an older client base, man, that's super important. We found that was important. So Travis, what do you use to manage the rewards? Is there like softwares that you recommend? Um, Okay, so Magento Enterprise has rewards built in. I'm Mm -hmm. building it out for a client right now. Mm -hmm. uh, And we're going to try that out. I haven't tried it before. Um, Magento has their work cut out for them on finishing that, putting the frosting on that cake for sure. And I'm kind of working with them right now to try to shore that up. Um, You're going to have to have some custom development to make that work right. That's that's the short version. Um, Now, there's Sweet Tooth, which is great. Those guys, a terrific partner. Um, I've I had a great relationship with them where I'd even I'd send them something that I thought was their extension goofing up Magento. Dude writes me back and says, "Hey, it's not that, but it's this from another vendor and I'll here's how to fix it." Hmm. Just totally like helping us out, getting us dialed in and it wasn't anything to do with them instead of saying, "Hey dude, you're bugging me with something that's not our problem, so right. go away." I said, no, "No, no, here. This is how to fix it. It's not us, but here. Let me just help you, dude." And Sweet Tooth was a really great partner in that respect. Um, and their software is terrific. Um, in mo- almost pretty much their whole suite, I really liked. And it was highly integrated with uh, Magento. I mean, it's an extension. Um, and actually, I worked with Sweet Tooth personally 
to get them set up with Dot Mailer. So I kind of put those guys together, which again, building partnerships. Well, I guess I haven't mentioned that. Building partnerships has been a really big part of my e-commerce journey. Yeah. Um, in these relationships with vendors and uh, whether it's a tech vendor or with a supplier of, of you know product. That's super important, man, to have those. And so I call these guys up. I'm like, you know, hey, uh, Michael at Dot Mailer, let's get this set up. Um, I need to have this functionality work in. And he's like, dude, that's a great idea. Yeah, 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 let's do it. Who are these guys, the Sweet Tooth guys? So I call up Sweet Tooth, put them together. And we've got um, within both of those guys are really fast movers. Uh, not all not all e-commerce company or uh, tech companies are going to do this for you. But like within a month or so, we had this highly integrated hmm. um, uh, system where we could pre- present the rewards in the emails. And that, that was a big turning point for us uh, again. Uh, where we just ramped up sales and and you know customers started sticking to us, so you, you get this momentum going mm-hmm. as you're you know it sort of builds exponentially once people aren't leaving, you know, and, yeah. and you're you're soliciting them uh, properly with like transactional emails and whatever else, and you're putting the points in there. That was terrific. That's yeah. that was the integration that I worked on that yeah. with them. Yeah. So Travis, what else worked with the email marketing, the Magento subscriptions, rewards? Partnerships. What else worked to build it up to over fifteen thousand dollars per day? Mm, okay, so fast shipping. Mm. Um, we did a really. We had a killer order management system, and we exploited it just like we did with the rest of the software. Um, good old Nick Sanders and myself are kind of addicts for that. We're gonna. We we love to just get in and figure out every last thing the software should do. Um, and exploit those things and see how we can use them um, even beyond where they're supposed to be. And yeah. so we, we push the order management system to um, a highly automated state where we were, and we had some customizations even done to it too. So orders are just printing out as they come in every 15 minutes. Mm. There's no processing or whatever as long as the inventory is there. Um, they're just bombing out the printer and our guys are running out and grabbing them. We had a countdown timer on the, the website like Amazon does order it in by whatever, 2.30 p.m. or something, Pacific time, it's going out. And our guys there um, had just, we had this great culture, man. And, and they would be excited to try to get people's orders out last minute. And they're trying to, everybody's trying to get that email back. Like, how the heck did you guys get this order here? I ordered it like 3.30 or 4 o'clock and I'm in Seattle and I got the next day. How did you guys do that? You're like magicians. I love you guys. And you get a customer forever when you do that. Yeah. You know? And that's and I kind of I went over that. Um, I tried to build that into the culture there as much yeah. as I could, the excitement that I feel for that personally, and you know, kind of um, nurture my team with that kind of stuff. And it, it really it was really rewarding for me personally when we were able to do that and the team was doing those types of things uh, and shipping things out super, super fast, just at, at Amazon speed. Right. Um, Basically, you know, with yeah. a small crew, talking 15, 16 people. Right. So how did it, tell me about the, the growth staff-wise initially to, you know, a year in, five years in. When did you start hiring more and more people? Okay. Let's see if I can remember. So 2005 to like 2007, it was like Nick and me and uh, like girlfriends and stuff helping out yeah because you're working till like three in the morning you know well initially we were yeah. uh, you know and and we didn't have that was just maybe the first couple of maybe the first couple of weeks we had some serious late nights like that just you know we were really excited trying to figure the software out and get this products moved over um, kind of racing against time uh, and we still even at that early stage we understood speed to market as yeah. soon as we got the stuff up then we could start selling it and move if it's not up man you're dead in the water. Right. Um, you know, you're not going to sell it. So we tried to get off that bad platform as fast as we could, Nick and I. Um, and then really, and I was doing, uh, I was doing the books initially and shipping and like with a headset on, I'm taking orders as I'm picking or I'm, I'm taking an order as I'm picking an order or maybe as I'm using a tape gun, you know, like hitting mute. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, that was happening, man. We had these great little headsets. Uh, and that was me like the initial crew was like myself and my wife, Sarah. Um, and she was what a really instrumental in, in, in helping out. She was one of the first real employees there besides mm-hmm. Nick. Now Sarah's an email ninja also. She is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's great, man. She's been my consigliere forever. She knows a ton about e-commerce, but, uh, her skill set is more with uh, the marketing, uh, email marketing, 
uh, and sort of uh, email marketing design, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, but from that, we grew uh, into, uh, you know, we finally hired a bookkeeper. That was huge. And as time went on, hired shipper and, you know, and all of a sudden I'm not shipping anymore. I couldn't believe it. We're all in a very tight, confined area. I mean, we're, we're in a big warehouse, but we're in yeah. maybe 20 square feet. Yeah. So a shipping guy is listening to me talk to customers. This guy had been that he ended up staying with us for five. He was, yeah, 2009 or 2010 he came on. So I think he was with us five years. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good old Kyle Bickley. And he ended up basically he learned how to sell and learn how to talk to customers. He had no previous experience in, in uh, customer service or you know uh, e-commerce or whatever. Well, he just heard me talking to all the customers and how I addressed them, yeah. and he was like, "Man, you just like you talk to them like like they're your best friend, right? And like you're just loving on them, man." And and I'm like, "Why wouldn't you? Like I don't know. I, this is that weird to you?" And he figured that out and kind of got that. Right. Um, it was interesting how that kind of we bounced that off each other a little bit because I didn't really realize it as much, and and so he learned that from me and he kind of uh, we all kind of adopted that sort of uh, through the years after that with all that when we started hiring a lot of people post 2010 mm -hmm. once Magenta started taking off for us um, and we started hiring a ton of people and really growing fast then we had to really be careful of how are we presenting ourselves like culture, how are we handling yeah. customers yeah man and and we had a, we were hanging out all the time and we were doing we're taking camping trips together we go um, you know have drinks after work uh, probably two or three nights a week at least um, you know Friday after work pinball machine upstairs we're all hanging out talking about work like a bunch of nerds and just oh, oh wait we can do this let's do that on the site this and that you know this customer oh yeah she needs that I mean it, we were into it man you're just living it yeah. living it yeah. yeah so bookkeeper shipper what was the next round of, of hires um, receiving that's a big one and all of a sudden, you don't think receiving is really a job when you're that small, right? It's like, oh, a couple boxes come in, whatever. But they start stacking up right. um, and doing it right. And then, wait, oh, what? You're stickering stuff now. We Because a lot of the stuff's intangible. So how do you deal with it? Um, and that's a, another common problem I find with uh, a lot of, of online retailers in the world. They'll, they won't ha be able to quantify what they're selling. And those... Those kind of uh, businesses are great. Those kind of uh, product lines are great because Amazon has a lot of trouble with that. So you buy yourself some time from them swallowing you live, and uh, they can't really compete with you if you've got this kind of product. Mm. So like animal animal hair thing. Um, so we're if you have a way to quantify that as it shows up and and you know sticker it properly and and or repackage it or whatever you've got to do. Um, that that's really helpful, and that's one of the things that we started doing is stickering everything in the store, so that uh, when we're shipping it, we could scan it into the box and really quantify it, tighten up our whole uh, workflow. Yeah. So, what yeah, what systems that you created did you find were super important that most people may have overlooked? It sounds like every step you started systemizing everything, like when it come in, you'd sticker it, you you kind of put it away so that when the order went out, you could scan it and keep track of everything. What was, what does that workflow look like that made it so efficient? Um, okay. So, I mean, that workflow was based on the order management system we were using. Basically that's mm -hmm. how the whole entire roadmap was built around mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And once we had, you know, creating location codes, uh, and you know, having a uh, being able to actually walk through and pick orders uh, with a path, an order pick path, mm -hmm. was was great. That was another part of that sort of system. Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question. Yeah, there. yeah. Just generally, I was curious. And then, what caused the fast growth in 2010? You said that you were hiring a bunch of people. Uh, Magento. And okay, so. I'm going to tell you right now, Magento is not for the meek. And right. <laughs> there's a lot of hobbyists playing around with Magento out there with Magento CE. Some get lucky um, and you keep it simple, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of people that are hosting Magento CE improperly, goofing around with it, and it's a nightmare. And they can't get it to work. And so it gets kind of this bad rap. And it's maybe it's loading slow, whatever. Magento Enterprise um, is also... A very dangerous beast. It's like, it's like 
Um, I, I say it's like riding a pissed off dragon. <laughs> it can slay your competition or it can eat you alive. And that's really true. Uh, our first year in doing Mageno, me um, f- being full of myself and being really uh, ambitious, um, with, and I'm not a developer, I decided, you know what, we're going to switch it to, uh, to Mageno out of, from Volution. Well, Volution's a hosted solution. Those guys have training wheels. They're going to hold your hand. They're going to tell you you did a good job. And it's great. It's easy. And you don't you get kind of comfortable when you're, you're making money and things are going great. And you're like, this new Mageno thing, it'll do everything, man. It'll do everything. Let's switch to it. Yeah. How do we? Oh, wait. It's not hosted by them? How does that work? <laughs> well, you go get hosting. Famous last words. Right? <laughs> you go get hosting somewhere. And you go and get, you know what? I'm really smart. I'm a smart shopper. I'm going to go get the cheapest hosting I can find. So we do that. We go get this cheap hosting. I'm not going to mention the company. It was awful. And we didn't realize why it was awful. We also did something that was nightmarish. And I need to share this so no one else does this. We did something. uh, We did a migration from Volution to Magento with this uh, sort of a cart transfer thing. Uh Uh-uh. Did not work at all. It it like it sprayed our Magento installation data fields with just crap, and it was it was very difficult to recover from that. Hmm. The website it really had a hard time for probably we had we had a, an awful time trying to recover from that. It was like we had like nine months of big trouble as, as we're launching Magento. We figured out how bad it was. Hmm. And we had already gone live, and we were in trouble. I mean, we had this huge. There's a big dip in 2010 ish, somewhere around there, where we were, we were switching to Magento, and we 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 had been kicking butt for every year on Volution. We switched to Magento, and it, and it's nose diving, man. And everybody was really concerned. I'm concerned. I'm working around the clock trying to fix it. Figured out, and we ended up switching hosts. Got some professional help and figured out what was wrong with our Magento installation and figured out, really took the time to figure out how it works right. Um, again, you're an entrepreneur, you're gonna make mistakes, man. And I was really just too ambitious and, and we got goofed up. After say nine months or so, we got with some people that could help us and we pulled this thing out of a tailspin and it just soared. Hmm. We started kicking butt, we got our rank back, we figured out what our customers wanted to see on the, you know, we got our pages set up uh, in a way that our, our customers were excited to shop it and they could find what they needed finally much, much better. It wasn't like, it wasn't as good as Evolution, it kicked the crap out of Evolution at that point. It was a totally different different uh, shopping experience. Uh, and we were able to, you know, present banners when we wanted to and on a schedule, uh, coordinate that with our uh, other sales or, or the same sale banner, what they would have on our remarketing campaigns and, um, uh, you know, in our AdWords or wherever else we're, we're presenting stuff. So you're coordinating your, all your marketing efforts all of a sudden. And then you're, wait, you're tying it into your uh, other third party stuff. So you can do segmentation like your ESPs and presenting all this information to your customers now. And really um, heightening your retention, heightening your engagement in all these different areas, um, you know, and, and, Within within a year or two, we saw of of finally launching Magento. I guess was probably probably a year and a half before total before we saw this thing just rocket ship, and mm-hmm. we were really excited about it. And there was like no turning back at that, no looking back at that point. Essentially. So Travis, would you have in retrospect hired like a special developer to do that, or what would you have done differently? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, retrospect is hard, man. Yeah. And that's we would have been way ahead. And I said, you know, these guys want like 60 grand. I don't, you know, I'm not making money like that. Why are they making money like that? Well, there's a reason. They know what they're doing. Right. You know, and now I'm, I'm teamed up with a lot of these guys. And I have a lot of the information now that I didn't have then, of course. So I'm in a different, different boat than I was then. And I know what mistakes we made. And uh, I offer a lot of that uh, counseling to people that are starting up with Magento that I, I go through and consult with and help them get set up. Even if I don't do the whole build out for them. Um, you know, with my team or, or with my third party developer, I'm giving them at least the roadmap of how this thing should go yeah. and what they should concentrate on. What to expect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what were sales like on Volusion and then after Volusion when you were soaring with Magento? Um, uh, short versions like, well, 
oh, we had 100 order day today. Yay. We had 100 orders. How are we going to get them out? Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden we're into, you know, 200 and a year and a half later, we're doing 200 orders double in a couple of years. I mean, and that's, you know, in that span. And then there was times that we're doing six or 700 orders a day. And then you add in your club. Oh, wait, we're doing a club. We're processing 200, 300 orders for the club that day. So it's just, you know, really incredible boost uh, with Magento for sure. Do you remember one of those big days where you celebrated? It was like a $10,000 day or $15,000 day. No, had more than that. We had a $85,000 day. Wow. So tell, I me, about, the tell me about that day. I got the screenshot on my phone, man. That was um, a couple years ago, Christmas. Uh, was it Christmas? Nope. It was end of the year. We did a huge end of the year sale. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was uh, basically, it was this idea we had that we could implement with Magento. And you're going to be, I'll throw it out there because a lot of people uh, if you got Magento, this is a great, great thing to do. If you don't have Magento, you can cry in your beer over this because you probably can't do it. Um, but the last couple of days of the year, we got to close out this merchandise, right? As after a while in, in retail, online retail, in retail, you figure out you don't want to be stuck up with a bunch of extra merch at the end of the year because of taxes, right? Everybody knows that. So the last three or four days, or the last pretty much the last week, we did like ten percent. Then next day is fifteen percent off. Next day is twenty. Next day is twenty-five, and then thirty. And then 35, something like that, in the last day. And we let everybody know ahead of time. Hey, man, if you want something, kind of keep an eye out. And because it's going to be, the selection's going down and we're not getting more. And if you need next month, if you need more of this stuff, we're not going to have it because everybody's out. All of our suppliers are out. So if you need to get this, you probably get it now. Get it at the 10% off if you know you got to have it. If you're going to, you want to gamble, wait till tomorrow. See what happens. 15%. And maybe the next day, 20%, right? Go ahead, gamble. See if it's still going to be there. But it might not. We had a lot of sales at the 10%. They kept gradually increasing. The last day, I think it was 35% or something. And it was insane. I came into work at 5, which is not abnormal. And I opened up my computer, looked at And I was like, it went from like nothing to like maybe 3.30 or 4 in the morning. It starts going. I'm like, what? Really? Right and right as I'd got to work at five, it's at I'm at like eighty orders an hour. Wow, and that's that's a ton for us. I mean, the website's still it's keeping it's making it happen, man. You know, Magento was doing great, um, and we we hosted with Nexus, who's a great partner. Highly recommend those guys, and so we didn't crash or anything. We're just rocking. And I te- I took a screenshot on my phone real quick and like texted that to everybody else, and they're like, "You're lying. You photoshopped that, man." Oh, no, it's happening, dude. 80, 80 orders an hour. Get in here right now. Somebody go to Einstein's and get some bagels and team get in here right now. We got to do this, man. It's time. To, let's rock because they are stacking up, dude. And we've got, I mean, we we had, we stayed down there until 9 or 10 that night at least and came back again at 5 and, you know, next morning wow. cranking them out. Wow. Yeah. And we'll go into some of the Magento versus Shopify versus Big Commerce a little bit later. Uh, for anyone who feels like, um, well, what if I don't use Magenta? What else is out there? So we'll talk about that. But um, <clears throat> talk about some more of the mistakes, Travis. So you, t- <laughs> you, we talk about the transition to Magento. What else didn't work on this upward trajectory? Oh, yeah. Okay. I've got a good one for you. Yeah. Um, there was another ESP. Uh, they will remain nameless. Um, their rumor on the internet was they had a better legal team than development team, and I found that out. They didn't sue me, but they these guys were this like ESP, another another email provider, email service okay. provider. Sorry, okay. ESP uh, um, email service provider. These guys, uh, they're basically a fraud, and they. They, I figured that, you know, I dealt with Bronto before and I'm like, hey, these guys are a little cheaper. They're going to, whatever. They've got some integration. They're talking the talk. They have this huge feature list. Um, and I didn't do my research. I didn't look them up online and look at their reviews. You know, I'm too busy rocking at the business and everything was going great. And I said, you know what? Let's, I was spending a lot of money on Bronto. I love Bronto and I really feel bad to say this, but I was spending a lot of money on them and I was weak. I had a weak moment and I went and tried these guys out. It was a nightmare. We lost so much money. We we spent three or four months with 
poor email campaigns. They weren't com- they weren't converting. Um, stuff was going to spam. That it was a nightmare trying to like figure out how to like create. Just creating the emails was awful. Hmm. Um, the WYSIWYG that they set up for us was terrible, and it didn't work. We were on the formal support the whole time. They couldn't ever get it integrated with Magento. This is when we were first starting to integrate. Hmm. This has got to be in 2011 or 12. Yeah. Um, and we were just integrating, uh, trying to f- uh, figure out an ESP that could integrate really well with Magento. And that, they sucked me in with that. They said they could integrate with Magento. It wasn't done. They're doing it for us. They're like, oh, we got somebody that bid on that. So now they're, they're hmm. trying us out as their guinea pig. Not cool, man. So we, we made a huge mistake there. That was a big mistake that I made. And we went crying back to Bronto. Lindsay at Bronto was gracious, took me back and um, made it all right. They actually worked really hard and got their integration going um, shortly after. And we were one of the first clients to kind of pioneer that with those guys. Is that company still around? That com- the other one that you, that was a nightmare? They've changed their name twice since then. Really? Wonder why. I mean, it was awful. I, I, yeah, I let them have it, man. Uh, and I looked online and I saw all these other people's reviews and I let them have it for all those people too. I saw the reviews they're leaving and they're like, we're scared. We're just going to let our contract run out because their legal team's threatening us. Really, dude? That's what you're going to do to your customers? People are going to talk, you know? And I wish I would have saw those reviews before I signed up. But that's, that's why I guess they changed their name a couple times. So, so is there a, since you can't mention the name of the company, is there a website that people should check out reviews for these type of companies? Yeah, I'm sure you can find one. I mean, just look at you know email service provider provider review. But yeah. if you search the company name and search review and you know just common sense Google search it, yeah, um, it's something a lot of people don't do, and you really need to do that, especially these days with so many third parties out there uh, of various levels of integrity. Yeah, what are some of the popular ones? Bronto, you said Dot Mailer. Are there any other popular ones out there that people are using? Um. Yeah, let's see what else. List tracks good. Um, those guys are too rich for my blood. But if you have, like, if you don't, it, I try to have my clients be honest with themselves about where they're at, what they're good at. And if you're not good at email marketing and you don't know what you're doing, admit it. You're going to make more money if that's what you're about. If you really want to try to learn email marketing, go for it. But if you don't know what you're doing, admit it to yourself and get some help. And List Track will do that. They'll they'll just like throw it out there for you. Um, uh, they'll figure out what your clients want, do some A-B testing, uh, put together all the emails for you. Mm. I mean, they've got like full white glove service, right? Oh, wow. And Dot Mailer and Bronto aren't quite that way. They'll give you some training um, off the, off, you know, best practices out of the gate and some articles. Um, and then they'll, if you want to pay extra, they can hold your hand through it. Um, not white glove. They're not going to create the emails for you necessarily or anything, but they'll really give you, um, you know, a lot of good training if, if you want to pay for their, kind of like their consulting um, package, mm-hmm. but list track does all of it for you. They'll just handle it, mm-hmm. which is really cool for some clients. Yeah. Um, you know, I've recommended that a few times actually. Yeah. It's expensive, but they'll do it all for you and it'll make you a lot of money, especially if you're doing 10 million, 20 million, uh, you've got a really huge customer base. Just do that. It's great. Mm-hmm. Any others out there? Bronto equivalent or dot mailer equivalent? Oh, I'm sure they're out there. I haven't tried them personally. No. Okay. So yeah, I can't really speak. Or to any that. competitors to list track that you have heard people do well with. There's, the, I think list track is a big one, man. That's a big one. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Um, so what about phone systems? Do you have recommendations for phone systems that help people keep track of orders or customers or any specific uh, recommendations on that? Um. Yeah, actually, we got involved with uh, with a CRM system uh, for Kayako, uh, from from Kayako and uh, K A Y A K O. Those guys are great, mm-hmm. um, and that was a huge deal for us too. I should have mentioned that earlier. Mm-hmm. Of, of things that were kind of game changers for us. Yeah. Um, but when your team's getting back to people right away, and this is a team thing. This isn't the software thing. This is the software is a tool, man. You're going to have to have your team um, excited about getting back to people right away, especially when they're problem customers and stuff, because they're coming, man. You're always going to have problem customers. You're going to mm-hmm. have people that had a bad day, whatever. It can be a gloomy thing, uh, you know, customer service. And uh, your CSRs are going to have to conquer that. And they gotta, you got to keep pepping them up and, and, you know, keeping them excited. You give them that tool, like Kayako, um, where it's going to, uh, you know, you've got this 
emails essentially uh, it's not it's like Zendesk or anything else um, your emails are coming in fast they're stacking up you got to triage them send them to the right people to get you know, if it's a tech thing, okay, send it to our spinning wheel guy. He'll fix you up, whatever. Or if it's just like, hey, where's my order? Get in there, copy him in a, a tracking number and shoot it off, whatever. But answering those, uh, having a system where you can really quickly answer, uh, you know, CRM tickets fast mm-hmm. is is really important. And so that's the system you guys use, the Kayako. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. That was a good one. And Zendesk is great too. Um, we toyed with that for a while, but we didn't end up doing it. And what's, what was cool is we started when we started with Kayako, this guy's grandfather is in. I mean, we had a uh, we installed it on our server. Um, Nick, my super nerd, he put that all together and got that just chiming. Um, and so we didn't have to pay for a SaaS model when they switched over. When mm. all these guys are switched over to SaaS model now. Um, and, and a right. lot of it's worth it, you know, because you're going to help the guys develop the software with SaaS model. That's great. And you got to respect that, but at the same time, when you got it installed on your server and it's an older version that just works killer, why not just keep it? Yeah. So, any other big mistakes you wish you would have avoided? So we have the Magento initially transfer, and then the email transferring the email. Any other big ones that you felt set you back? Um. Yeah. There's a segue here. Um. Okay, so why am I not in e-commerce right now? Why am I consulting right now? Yeah. Um, why, why am I consulting? Well, actually, I was consulting before uh, when I was still running Paradise Fibers. Uh, I had a lot of, of friends and, in the industry, in that industry, in, in the yarn and needlecraft and uh, beyond, friends uh, that had other e-commerce businesses I'd met at conferences or whatever, and they'd ask my advice. They're like, Travis, what's going on with, what, what should we do here or that, there, and... Um, I would just give it away for free and which is great. I mean, they're friends and whatever, and I want to help them out. Um, I really enjoyed it though. And I would get like really like long winded and kind of not really you necessarily geek out on e-commerce stuff. It was called travising on them and that's what they would call it. And I would just get so into their thing. Like I'm like over explaining it, like, and, and getting it, you know, uh, getting into on such a, like a, a granular detailed level. level. Yeah. Exactly. Granular level. Um, and getting into their project more than they even wanted to get into it, really. And, you know, they're like, man, that's a lot of work. You're going to have to do all that, but it'll work, won't it? I'm like, yeah, dude, go do it. Make it happen. Aren't you excited? This is your business, man. And, and you know, a lot of people I was able to get excited about their business, which was fun for me to, like, make this really positive change for these people. And, and you know, a lot of those people I'm still friends with now uh, from the needlecraft mm-hmm. industry, and I actually consult with some of them currently, um, you know, some of those relationships. So, why am I not in e-commerce now? Um, I am the victim of a hostile takeover. Wow. Oh. Um, yeah, and and the the strange thing is, it was from my father, who was my partner. And one day I go to a meeting where I thought I was buying him out, and we I ended up walking out of there without a business, fifty five percent owner, and I walked I walked out of there and. I wasn't allowed to come back to the building, and that was it. And so my my mistake there was signing a contract in the middle of processing orders and everything else, and my dad's going, hey, sign this contract. Sign this contract. And I go, dude, I'm busy. I'm working, man. I got stuff to do. We're getting out orders. I'm making this business rock. This is in 2008. This is in our kind of early growth. And he said, oh, we've got to be a corporation. We've got to lock this down. So I said, sure, dude. How about let's make some money? Let's figure this out. Let's get our business together. So after a lot of badgering, like I went and I signed this thing and I'm like, okay, where is it at, man? Let me sign this thing. And, and he goes, aren't you going to look it over? I'm like, dude, you're my dad. And why, what are you going to, what are you having me sign here? Come on. I, I mean, whatever. If I, if I'm not here, I mean, I've got us this far. If I'm not here, we got nothing. And this place is going to fall apart, man. If I walk out the door. Right. So I, I don't want to walk out the door. You're not going to have me sign something awful. So I signed my life away. Signed my business away, actually, literally. In 2008, and um, under the guise that I was still 55% owner, I put my heart and soul and um, 60 to 80 hour weeks, and my wife working insane hours along with me for seven or eight years as well. Um, all of a sudden, it all came to an abrupt stop, hmm. and we had to. My wife was escorted out of the building with some cop and of our building that I owned at the time, even, 
And I went to a meeting to buy him out. We're getting a, a check for him and this and that. And they said, actually, we got you, sucker. We've got this thing in, and you're fired and you're out and you're no longer on the board of directors and you can't come back to the building. You can't talk to the employees. You can't do anything. That's crazy. It's crazy, man. It was crazy. And um, I could talk about it now, but that's been, that's, it, was, it was a huge, uh, huge boon in my life. That was a huge changing, uh, huge change for us. Um, and we fought in court and we just ran out of money and couldn't fight anymore. Uh, possession is definitely nine tenths of the law. And these guys had a plan. They wanted to take our business from us and they did it. It's pretty Who ugly. Who would have thought that? Yeah. Especially if it's your, your own family. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's an ugly thing, and uh, but anyway, it's it's interesting though because it's opened this whole new chapter uh, for me because yeah, well, hey, you know what? Most people that um, there's a lot of consultants out there in digital uh, agencies, and you look at their resumes, none of them have any real experience. They might have a couple experience, a little bit, of, maybe a couple years, and they flopped. Nobody's yeah. got. 10 years of successful e-commerce experience under right. your belt. Right. So I can, I kind of tote that around a little bit and yeah. I'm proud of it. It's very true. You know? Actually, I was having this conversation with Chad who, you know, we were talking, who's, who's the founder of this Cubana and has his own e-commerce business that um, I like to have, you know, we like to have people on who have done it before, you know, who speak from experience. Yeah, there's nothing like it, man. I mean, you you can read about it. You can go take a course, whatever. You can prep as much as you want. But, I mean, if you haven't done it and mm. lived it and had to deal with all the crap and, and you know, mm. managing all these employees and getting your fingers dirty, man. Yeah. So the um, curiosity interviewer side of me wants to ask questions about that, but I know it's a sensitive topic, so I'm not going to. Um, because it's on a, it's so it's tough on so many levels, not just a business level, but on a personal level. You know when that happens, and it's either a friend or family. Um, but instead, I'll ask about your wife. Um, tell me the influence, and you know, because she was there through the whole uh, boom and building up Paradise Fibers, and then also in Sharp Commerce. Um, tell me about her support and skill in e-commerce and what she did um okay well she we'll, we'll go on a positive note instead yeah of going down the negative route <laughs> that's right no my wife's there is amazing um yeah. and she's been a great partner uh, essentially she was i mean my my father at the shop was hardly ever present and i'm not going to go into uh beating that that horse but um mentally or physically wasn't present and mm -hmm. my wife from the early early days gave me like a lot of inspiration that, hey, we're going to make something out of this. This is going to be awesome. And she was actually a knitting instructor at the store. Didn't have any experience mm. at all. And she's going to all these uh, seminars, uh, going to uh, national classes like in LA and wherever um, where she's learning all these techniques. She's bringing them back to Spokane and teaching all the ladies here, teaching the instructors here. Um, so that was kind of cool. And she got into it, man. She's making all these sweaters and stuff, and her friends are making fun of her. Like, what are you? You're the old lady knitting now, you know? And she's, <laughs> she's, you know, 35 years old at the time, 36 or something. And uh, she looks really young too, and hangs out with a lot of younger folks. Um, so, but anyway, so she's she's uh, been a really, uh, she's been kind of the backbone for me through like this whole thing. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, she's she's a great woman. Yeah. And so, as far as her responsibilities at the shop, she did all the email marketing. Uh, worked directly with uh, Dot Mailer towards the end a lot. Uh, the last three, we had them for the last three years there, something like that, and uh, designed all the email campaigns, um, did all the clubs for us, and that was a huge deal. She had did all. She was into it. She knew what a lot of. I mean, I, I think I know what the customers wanted. She was mm. like, Travis, I don't think it's going to fly, dude. At, at once she, in a while, she knew what the customers the kind of what they were thinking and what they wanted to hear and what would work and what wouldn't work. She's one of them. Yeah. She's an addict along with the rest of these girls, knitting and, and, and spinning fiber and stuff. She, could, she learned how to spin. Of course, I was spinning too at the time. That was what I liked to do. Um, and I would you know teach customers in the store how to spin, whatever. It was kind of strange, but I loved it. It was, it was great. It's the best part of my day. Go spin with a, you know, uh, some customer for 20 minutes. Some people do yoga and you spin, yeah. It's relaxing, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's weird. I, I don't know if you if you get a chance, try it. It's fun. So, what are the biggest mistakes you see? I mean, obviously, with Sharp Commerce, you're now consulting a lot of big e-commerce businesses. What are the biggest mistakes that you're seeing? Okay, um, I've got I've got one right now that's just insane. There's there's somebody here in in Spokane, even in my town, that is, um, I'm not consulting for them right now. Um, I have done some discovery sessions with them uh, early on, and they they don't have an ESP, and they're doing 13 million a year. Hmm. They don't have any email marketing program. They don't all. email anything, nothing. And you can't believe it. It's like, I, it's, like it's not real. And, <laughs> what dude, do you, you guys tell are, them? Yeah. <laughs> like you guys are, well, I told my friend who works there, I was like, hey man, look, you guys are, you're you're missing out on a few million bucks a year at least and you're depending on how well you're going to engage your group and and i don't know uh, depending on how that particular category performs because all the categories are different they're gonna you know depending on what you're selling um there's different i mean come on let's be honest you're doing needle craft so if you can successfully email (laughs) needle craft and do subscriptions no one has any excuse (laughs) I thank you. Yeah, I, I kind of. That's what you should use. I mean, uh, that's, that's pretty good. I'm gonna use it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean that that was a that's a big shocker for me, and they still don't have one right now. I know that for a fact. That's so strange, and I've tried to convince them to get it. They don't. They're not interested. Um, you know, it's on their roadmap. They're not interested. Really, it's on. It's on their roadmap. So, because what's your profile of um, you know Paradise Fibers? What's the customer profile like? above 50 year old female what's 45 to 65 yeah. crazy cat lady yeah. kind of thing yeah and they'll they would crack up I, some of my customers will probably see this and they'll be going travis but it, that's what it is man um yeah that's 45 65 affluent um semi-affluent uh, females yeah. for the most part but there's there's dudes that i do say that because like i don't know you know if those people are opening emails and reading emails and responding to emails, then I can I I don't know what your that person's business is, but um, I can imagine they do probably check their email. Oh yeah, no, and and the thing is too, like I said earlier, I mean if you respect your audience um, and you give these people good stuff and you put in a subject line and a follow up. Uh, under your subject line, something really good. The first, you know, the first sentence of your email is basically email marketing stuff. You make sure that doesn't say, if you can't view this email, click here. That's not interesting. Make sure you put something good underneath of uh, right. your subject line or, or the first line in the head of yep. your email. Uh, so that pops up on a preview on your phone or, or in your Outlook. Right. Uh, little, little tip there that'll make you money. Direct response um, marketing 101. Yeah. That's it. I mean, it's stupid stuff like that that people don't get. Um, and there's some ESPs out there that. I even three or four years ago, I was looking at big ESPs, ESPs that are hosting, like doing work for like Walmart and stuff. These guys are, they didn't have, I was uh, checking them out and they didn't have that particular feature. It wasn't available in the template. Hmm. You have to get it custom made. And I'm like, Why? this is like a best practice, man. And you can't do it out of the box with your yeah. super expensive platform. It's very strange. But uh, so that person, that client, um, does not use email at all. What other big mistakes are e-commerce businesses making? Ah, uh, boy. Okay, so here's a good one. Uh, it's kind of a broad topic, but in general, people, uh, there's a lot of e-commerce shop owners they are like, I'm paying too much for my AdWords or my pay-per-click or my PLAs, whatever. I'm not going to use that. I'm not doing that. There's other big guys out there that are going to um, they can outbid me. I'm not going to do it. I'm putting my foot down, you know. And I, I hear these guys saying this stuff, mm-hmm. um, and I'm like, okay, well, what are you doing to make the most of those? Like when you're doing it, what's your return rate for your customers? What's your customer lifetime value? How many times are these guys going to order from you after you initially get them? Yeah. And oh, what? I don't. How do you? What? Huh? I'm like, okay. So all you're seeing, you're just looking at the short game. Hmm. And you're probably not playing the long game or looking at the long game at all. Yeah. And, and I, you know, you roll that out to a customer and say, "Look, 
And when, that's when I, what I'll, I'll come in and I'll evaluate and say, look, are customers really sticking to you? Are you getting that second and third order? Um, are you, what are you doing to market to them again um, in the future? <laughs> Keep them on board. Uh, you can make the most of your pay-per-click, I mean, really, with uh, you know doing rewards, things like that, uh, engaging emails, um, and doing um, you know actually providing the rewards in the email is a great way yeah. to get your second sale, no matter what, because they don't want to let that money go. But guess what? They get another reward when they buy their second sale. So you hit them with their third, third or fourth sale. Maybe they're not. They're like, I'm not playing that game anymore. They got me right. Or maybe they're not. Maybe they're like, Hey, I like these guys. I'm going to keep buying stuff from them. You know, right. especially if it's consumables. And that's that's something else you got to figure out. Are you, are you a one-time shop, or um, you know, and maybe some accessories you can sell them after your one-time big purchase? Excuse me. <coughs> or are you somebody who's selling like filters or like printer cartridges, where it's a consumable, uh, and that's a different different right, type of thing. Right. You can put them on a recurring billing structure, and they're much more apt to. You know, they've got to get this thing again. Yeah. Um, whatever supplies they need, you know, and so that's you can. It's a lot easier to keep those kind of guys uh, engaged for PLAs and and stuff like that. So you find people are looking at just that front end sale, and they're not really seeing past that, and they're not looking at the. They're tracking the statistics to if that person's buying again and what the lifetime value is. <coughs> right, um, and I actually read an article on attribution today. This guy's talking about. Um, how to actually measure all this stuff? Yeah. So, and yeah. I did. I never really, uh, when I was doing e-commerce, I didn't. You know, I, there's so many things going on. I just knew. I kept an eye on what was filling my bank account with money and right. what was making customers happy. Yeah. So, and there was there's going to be crossover between some of these things, especially yeah. with uh, the different programs incentivizing things. Uh, whether you're you know giving points for Facebook likes or reviews yeah. or um, you know, different things like that, but there's going to be, there's going to be some loss there where you're giving away too much on either coupons, um, or you're spending too much on AdWords or whatever else is costing you to get these customers. Um, just make sure that you actually have a plan where you're actually trying to get, trying to keep them on board, trying to get them to stick to you, uh, and, and, you know, go through the motions of look at this thing with fresh perspective and say, would I shop with me? Really? Would I, well, what are you doing to keep, you know, keep me coming back? So how do you keep track of that stuff? Like from, I guess, can you walk people through an ideal scenario, <laughs> maybe hitting a AdWords ad to uh, do send them to a piece of content or to a product page to buying? What what does that ideal scenario look like? There's no easy recipe for that. Yeah. Um, dude with the attribution uh, article today, they're selling a service that will do it. And so you put, you, <laughs> yeah. you plug that into your ad. I gotcha. You plug it into all these different systems, and you say, "Okay, so this customer order number whatever," and you they tag that to all these different channels and activities that you're doing: email marketing, yeah. AdWords. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's a way to do it manually thing. somehow. With it's not worth it, dude. Yeah. I mean, it, it can it can be when you're at a really high level when you've like hit market saturation. I have almost no customers that have hit market saturation. They may think they have. They're plateauing. They're just making excuses. They haven't really right. done all the ex you know everything that they can do. And there's always more initiatives, man. And that's that's kind of one thing my team excels at is finding yeah. new ways uh, to find low hanging fruit. Yeah. So can you talk about one of those times when someone came to you and they're like, Travis, I'm at a plateau. What do I do? And what what advice did you give them? Got a lot. A uh, recent one. Guy who sells vitamins, and I don't know if he's implemented this, um, but he's he didn't actually sign up with me, but I gave him some free advice, and he was super excited. I'm assuming he's doing it now. He said he was. Um, he's got a recurring billing thing for his vitamins, right? I mean, pills are great, um, and I don't have a lot of experience in that industry. That's the first time I've had a pill client or, or a vitamin client, whatever. Yeah. And but I, I see it as a consumable, right? And so. Yeah. He's got this recurring billing thing. Well, you can check here if you want to get more. Uh, keep them coming to you. I'm like, dude, I don't know. How's it working for you? Because it kind of traps them in there. I don't want to get trapped into just having pills showing up. I don't know. I mean, maybe I don't need them and I just have them stacking up. Or what if I want to cancel my program or whatever? Right. Um, and it, it, was, it was just clumsy. It was like you check a box and you, you're just going to get auto ships forever. And it's like, I don't. this doesn't seem intuitive. How's it working? 1%. 1%. And I was like, that's not working, dude. This should be better. 
So if I were, if I, you know, I'm looking at it in a different way. So, all right, let's do this. Let's do, um, after they put it in their cart, you know, they want it, right? And you could put a little incentive if you need to on the page, on the product page saying, Hey, save blah, 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 by putting this, you know, put it in your cart and there's something magical is going to happen on the next screen. However you want to present it, you get to your next screen <clears throat> and you've got this little uh, pop-up or a banner or something. And Magento is great about that kind of stuff. If you've got this in your cart or this even this type of product in your cart or if this attribute equals this, whatever, you can pop up a little banner and solicit people for stuff. And you can say, hey, you know what? Do you want this shipped to your house every every whatever? You can pick uh, how often you want it shipped, however, whatever, and you can have some defaults there and they can adjust them. And it, you can say, you know what? Do this and we'll give you 10% off your order today. And he was like, dude, that sounds great. I'll do that. Yeah, this is awesome. And he did say dude, actually. And uh, I love clients that say dude like me. I have a problem with that. Sorry. I'm from, I'm from California. I get a pass, right? Maybe. Um, <laughs> but that, anyway, that was, uh, that was a really, um, he really liked it. And I think that was, um, he was kind of, he was actually just switching over. I tried to get him to switch to Magento. He's switching Shopify. What was he using before? Uh, some like ASP card or something that mm. was really limited and he had a lot of trouble with um and he was he, that's where he thought he was plateauing and i the guy um really great guy younger guy and he had um didn't have a lot of experience and just didn't quite have the budget to hire us man so i just kind of gave him a couple of free tips yeah call me i'll give you some free tips most likely i'm kind of a softy like that but these are their uh, free tips if they call you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, you've got a lot of really good tips actually. Uh, just today, I'm, uh, there's a lot of little money makers if you implement some of those things I talked about today for sure. So, so how does the how does that work for someone to work with you? Just so I don't, you know, let's say they hear this. Travis is a nice guy. He's really knowledgeable. I don't want them people to call and waste your time necessarily. What um, what kind of clients do you tend to work with? Uh, all sizes, man. Um, so, I mean, any, somebody doing 5 million up to hundred million, whatever we can handle it for sure. Um, we'll always find some low hanging fruit. I mean, some of the bigger clients are surprisingly, uh, missing, you know, a lot of elements that are easy, easy to implement and not even expensive to implement. And they'll, they'll produce uh, revenue right away. Mm -hmm. Uh, but how you work with me and, and my team, um, we've got, Basically, we'll come in and do uh, an, a quick discovery session to make sure we're going to be a good fit. And then we'll do an assessment um, to see, you know, if we can make a big difference for you. Yeah. And essentially, you know, price it out as such as a package to make a certain amount of uh, change with your sales for you or whatever you're desiring. Um, we're kind of gotten away from the hourly model. We do more of a package type of thing now. Mm -hmm. Is there something common that you often see with businesses in the discovery session that is a trend that is uh, often a low hanging fruit for them? Or does it vary depending on the business? It's so it's, that's hard to say. Uh, a lot of the things I've mentioned today are really common mm -hmm. um, with most of my clients and they don't, uh, what they'll, you know what a big, a big hindrance is not having the right platform. Most clients that I run into that are plateauing aren't on a good platform and mm -hmm. it's, or, or it's dated or it's like, I have some people on ASP that are just floundering, haven't tried, they're building another site on ASP and, and they're thinking it's going to be better and they released it and it's just tanking. It's sad to watch and, and they could have, and it took them two years to do it. And so, I mean, uh, there's, there's that kind of stuff's happening. I see that all the time with dated platforms. Um, and when I show them, Hey, look, and, and I don't work in Magento. I like Magento. Um, a lot, as you can as you can tell, yeah. I have a ton of experience with it, and I've compared a lot of the other platforms. It's by far my favorite if you can afford it. Yeah, um, but that's what I try to plug people into and, and yeah. get them going, at least going down that path. And often I'm maxing out their current platform really fast. I'm like, well, you can't do this you, I, unless you're going to do custom development for ten grand. Wait, Magento, five hundred bucks for an extension, dude. It's up and running in like four days. Mm hmm. You know? What was the biggest challenge for you when you were running um, Paradise Fibers? Uh, it was, uh, I didn't know what it was for a lot of years, actually. Hmm. I didn't know what it was. It was a, I was always scrambling. And the first 
time, the first time I actually really was able to get away from that was when I moved my office off the main floor, out of the pit, essentially, of a bunch of desks down there where all just everybody's on the phone talking to customers. Customers are coming in, they got access to you. I got out of there, I went to the next level, the second level, and employees couldn't directly attack me with their questions or whatever they needed. Um, so I wasn't the answer man. I got a little bit of a buffer there. Yeah. And then um, also customers couldn't get to me either because I'm a nice, I'm a pretty nice dude and they want to talk to me. Right. Um, you know, they're like, oh, it's Travis, the owner. Let's talk to him. And I really like talking to him. So I had a problem there. And I, I was good to get away from that. Yeah. Um, and then that that helped. And I start, I kind of got a whiff of that. And I said, this, this is pretty cool. I, this is good. I'm getting a lot of work done. I'm starting just, I was at the tip of getting some really uh, good work done, which was like, you know, figuring out the plan for the future and initiatives and analyzing more of the data um, that we're getting from the website and analytics right. um, and figuring out, you know, where I should be spending my time. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm finding I'm on my phone, you know, with vendors trying to get us better deals all of a sudden in the last few years that I was there, which added up to, you know, extra, you know, a couple hundred grand or something in, in profit at the end of the Huge. year. Huge, yeah. Crazy, man. It adds up really quick. Um, you know, you get an extra ten percent off from one of your vendors that you're selling, uh, you know, three hundred grand a year for or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so there's the, those kind of things and initiatives with the website was big and, and that I was able to do that once I got off the floor and I got some space. Um, and we got a really robust uh, phone system there that we could, you know, really communicate very well and they could still get to me, but I, you know, was able to push them back. Yeah. Now, the final stage of that and really optimizing, and this is something I do for my clients, yeah. is um, we started using Asana project management, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is free for under 15 people. Yeah. Uh, and I've run into a couple developers that use it too, so we were able to loop those guys in. Um, and, and so I've got you know maybe my 10 staff members or something that all are at desks, tethered to desks, or not shippers or whatever, you know, and they're getting back to me with feedback and projects and communication is going through the roof. It's awesome. Um, and morale too, because Asana is awesome. They put little rainbows and unicorns that shoot across the screen when you get stuff done. That's the best, man. It really is the best. I love <laughs> um, it's very, and it says like yippee or something like really out of context and strange. And it's, you know, stars, little rainbow stars. Um, when you create, you know, you get tasks done. It's stupid stuff like that, but it's, it was really fun to use. And uh, I still use Asana a ton with my clients mm -hmm. and, um, and kind of train them on how I used to use it for my e-commerce business. Because you think of project management software and you're thinking, well, we're not, you know, uh, a software not a developer, developer right, right. Or, 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 you know, whatever, whatever project management, you, yeah. uh, typical project management business might be. It doesn't sound like an e-commerce business at all. It doesn't sound like the right match necessarily. But when you start putting things in there, like your initiatives, for the future and your goals and things and you're you're yeah. getting feedback from different team members and you know um delegating and i was you know i found <clears throat> over at towards the tail end i'm i'm out of town this is one of the few vacations i took during this thing um i was there for five years without ever taking a day off basically at least working five mostly six uh, days a week yeah. and often seven um, we didn't take my wife and I took a honeymoon and like two other vacations maybe while we were there. It was like oh. we never took a break, um, and and we we're always just running fast. So towards the end, as soon as I got Asana running, I'm on the second floor. I got distance. The company's just racing at that point. I mean, we're we're this thing's on steroids, and all and my my employees are loving it. They're having a great time with it. The the software, they're kicking some butt. They feel really good about themselves. Um, had a great group of people there. The culture was terrific. And a lot of these people re really got along they, with a lot of friendships there, which is, uh, I, I like. And that's adding yeah. a lot to, um, that adds a lot to whatever, humanity or whatever it is. It's cool, man. It makes you feel good when you put people together. That, yeah. And so many people are kind of like outcasts or whatever too. I don't want to say outcasts, but they're like, they don't have a ton of friends or whatever, right? And this group that I put together, they're like taking them in kind of. And they're part of our team yeah. they're part of our group and on the weekend we'd hang out with them just like whatever um it was a really wide variety of people there it was that's a it's a cool thing to have that kind of a culture um and good people yeah uh, but they were all working together really hard and really well with through asana on your phone i, I had it on my phone it's i'm getting you no know, things are popping up 
nine or ten at night and stuff. People are brainstorming. How about this? Wow. Whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Type back. So the last year I was there or so, um, added up the Amex points, took off to Caribbean with my wife, and we stayed there for a week. And I was really scared. I had a sauna in my hand, man, and I'm I'm seeing the stuff coming up. We had you know internet there, and I'm okay. Yeah, sure. Answer that question real quick. Whatever. And as a CEO of this company, as a director of e-commerce there. I'm able to really, in real time, help my staff if I need to from the right. pool. You know, yeah, Margar- margarita in my hand. It was great. Was it was. Much, it was a really like a much cool deserved feeling. vacation. <laughs> it was, man. That was like that's that was the pinnacle of of you know my experience at Paradise. Probably is having knowing that my team was doing a killer job while I was taking a quick break. Um, well, long break actually. It was like a week, and um, you know, able to help them and, and communicate with them via our project management software and no stuff's yeah. getting done. Just seeing things getting checked off, you know, seeing what's happening back yeah. home. Yeah. Travis, so on that note, what software do you use that you find is essential for the e-commerce business? We mentioned Asana, Bronto, Dotmailer, List Track, Magento, uh, Sweet Tooth. What other ones did we not talk about software-wise that would be important to mention? We talked about Kayako, Zendesk, um, what else? Boy. Those are all my faves, man. Yeah. Um, and we could have hit them all. but Yeah. I mean, having, having a good order manager is really important. Mm-hmm. And um, I've got a ton of them. You know, there's a, there's a couple of my favorites. <coughs> Contact me if you're interested in that. Um, and I'm actually looking at uh, Scubana. Yeah. So yeah, the guys who are, who are hosting the show. I'm actually checking those guys out right now. Oh, cool. So I always do a quick word from our sponsor, Scubana. And so basically, you know, I always give the the plug of imagine if you can combine all the software tools you currently use to run your e-commerce business into one centralized cloud platform. And obviously for a fraction of the cost makes it even better. Would you use it? Travis, of course you'd use it. Scubana does all that. I actually personally use them. And what I love most about them is the SKU profitability report because I can go in there and it tells me actually which ones are making money, which ones are losing money, which ones I should probably not sell anymore. Um, And it does a lot of automation, which I like. And I know you like automation too. So if something's coming in from one site, I can automatically have it shipped out and have the, um, which you'll probably go through and, and look at the, what it actually does, but have the different, um, you know, commands so that I don't have to go in and ship it from one place and manually do anything. It just, if it comes in, it automatically gets shipped out from wherever I want it shipped out from. So, uh, I'm interested to hear what you think after you get done with your demo. Um, so mentors, Travis, or any other thoughts on Scubana? What, what do you look for? What are you looking forward to as far as the, the demo goes? Like, What do you look for when you're demoing uh, a software like that? Everything. Uh, a lot of it is the automation for order management. That's a big part of it. Yeah. Um, putting together a lot of rules on how yeah. things need to be handled when the, when the orders come in. Mm-hmm. Flexibility. Uh, so it can it can deal with a lot of different carts. Um, that's important for me because uh, I've got a lot of different uh, right. clients uh, that aren't going to get away from their cart, but integrate. they might be able to. Yeah, they might be able to get a uh, switch their order manager. Um, you know, as long as they hook up to the cart properly and have like really good integration. Mm-hmm. Um, now, and especially if this is cloud based, I'd like to see um, the uh, integration. You know, basically when the biggest hurdle that I see with some of the more popular order management software yeah. out there is when you're adding new products. Very often, you know, a lot, even big companies that are using really advanced stuff, yeah. they're having to have like one or two spreadsheets um, possibly put into two different places. You know, you've got two different databases, one for your website and one for your uh, local order management, very possibly. Yeah. Um, now, in the cloud, you can tie them together easier. Yeah. It's a lot easier to yeah. do than if you've got like a local, uh, local server running this kind of stuff yeah. with the API. But that's that's a big problem, and it's getting dealt with, you know, slowly as as more of the order management, cloud based order management is coming out. Yeah, um, it's just a lot of the cl- what I see is a lot of the cloud based order managers 
are missing tons of features. You yeah. know, that some of the old school dudes that um, are set up on local servers. Which uh, features and, do you find they're missing usually? <coughs> you know, silly stuff. Um, like stupid stuff like forecasted purchasing. There's a couple of big players out there. They're like, hey, 25 grand to get set up and we're going to charge you a thousand bucks a month, mm. blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, okay, let me, and I, I'm talking to them for a long time about it and I flush out the whole thing. And try, and I'm trying to help them out because I'm, I'm like, hey, you know, what? I want to sell this to my client. Um, you need to put these features in. And I give them a list and they go, oh, thanks. We're going to put that, you know, in the garbage. I'm like, oh, cool. That's great, man. We're going to put that in the garbage, you said? Yeah. Uh-huh. Pretty much. I mean, they don't <laughs> say that, but that's where it's going to go because none of these guys are listening. They're just right. not listening. Yeah. Um, and, I, and sometimes I'm like, dude, I, I can't talk to you. I need to talk to someone else. Let's, let's move on and let me talk to your boss or your boss's boss or whatever. Right. If you guys want to make a change in this software. Yeah. And I don't want to talk to a developer. I want to talk to somebody who's a decision maker. Right. It gets a big picture, you know. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> some of those, I've talked to a couple of the, you know, owners of these companies, and it kind of worked my way up. And I don't know why. I'm just kind of hard headed, and I'm like, you know what? Your software is really cool. And it's got these, you know, it's got just in time inventory and a couple other really cool things. Yeah. You could do so much more. And, and I've been around the block, and and I know what my clients want. Yeah. After you, and that's one of the advantages of working with me. I see a lot of different systems and a lot of different. Um, e-commerce merchants and, and what's right. working for all these different companies right, right? and how to use all that stuff in yeah. your strategy. You see the trends, yeah. Yeah, trends and then also just what these different systems that people have put together that are really fantastic, that are working, that are making money. Yeah. You know, um, but anyway, I mean, having so many stupid things like forecasted, forecasted purchasing, man, and there's a couple companies, it's been a couple years since I talked to them and I laid it all out. And I made like a small video presentation for him. I mean, I went through a lot of trouble. And I said, you know, here, this is how it's supposed to work with another software that I had. And yeah. they don't care. Whatever. They're still yeah. doing min-max at one, order five. And it's like, dude, why don't you order, base it on the last 30 days of sales or 365 days of sales and order 30 days worth or, or 60 days worth. There's yeah. so much power in that. Um, and you can clean up your inventory. Yeah. I'm. I would like to be on a fly in the wall of that conversation, that demo. So I'll have to ask you and, and Chad afterwards, um, separately, how it went, <laughs> and get the two perspectives. No, I'm excited to get Chad on the phone. No, I I really am looking forward to that. I and think uh, you guys will hit it off. Yeah, um, that's cool. So, last question before we do the software um, showdown which I call it, and you're like, I don't even know what that means, Jeremy. But it just means we're going to be comparing Big Commerce versus <clears throat> Magento versus Shopify. Or Volution, Volution, actually. I oh, think, Volution. Yeah. Oh, whatever Volution, you, whatever you want to compare. I don't, yeah. Those are my faves, man. Yeah. Shopify. Um, well, yeah, but that's fine. If it's not your favorite, I want to know why it's not your favorite, because obviously a lot sure. of people are using it, so I still want you to talk about it. Um, yeah. But before I go there, obviously, well, ch people should go check out Sharp Commerce. I like that domain, by the way. I always remember it and I know how to spell it. So um, sharpcommerce.com. Um, so before we go into that conversation, Travis, what else do we miss from this e-commerce journey that we need to talk about last? Oh, boy. I think we got it, Jeremy. You, we got I it? Think, I think we're home, man. I think okay. we covered I, there's a lot of good nuggets of information in there. Great nuggets, great nuggets. Yeah. For all you out there checking this out, I mean, implement a couple of those babies and make some money. Yeah. Any other big lessons from business in general? You know, employees make your business, mm -hmm. and giving them ownership was a big part of my success. Yeah. Um, and there's an article on my website on how to do that or about that. Um, and I really, that is something that I believe in and you can talk yeah. to anybody that's worked for me, um, you know, really taking, taking to heart the relationship there and it's not just an employee, yeah. um, you know, this, these are people that are working for you, they're working with you and that's, I, I never really had people working for me. I had them working with me more, yeah, I guess. team. Yeah. Team mentality. And with the project management, you could assign me a task. Anybody could assign <laughs> anybody a task. Right. You know, and that's how that, that was a really cool part of Asana, by the way. So how do you do that? How do you give ownership 
to the staff and okay <clears throat> so when i hire people uh we get a, i get them started by figuring out what they're good at and yeah. i'll throw them in the mix somewhere wherever i kind of need some help and i'm asking a lot of the other and I, I'll, I'll monitor them and figure out what they're good at yeah. and i plug them into that area wherever they end up and at that point they've lasted long enough where i think they're going to work out and i always you know go by the uh, uh mantra hire slow fire fast and so you you're you're nurturing one or two people along at a time or maybe you know five <clears> percent <throat> of your workforce along at the time on a real uh, kind of handheld basis to see if yeah. they're going to really be long-term you know people yeah. and even for a shipping position or some silly man i mean it's i treated everybody the same way um and they would there's time especially when you're holding their hands so much they're going to come to you and they're going to say what do I do here? What do I do here? I want to. What do I, I don't know what to do, Trav. And I'm like, what do you think you should do? And then they go, oh, and you push back and figure out that's just management style, one on one, whatever. Push back. Don't find the answer for them right away. Push back a little bit, see what happens. And the the sort of wrap up with that and the through line that you can put into it is, okay, the decision's yours to make. It's not going to end our company. If you screw up, that's okay. You can make mistakes and you won't even get in trouble. Make the decision, make it happen. Whatever happens, happens. But I want to know why you did it. You have to have a reason why. Right. And the other the employees are like, yeah, travel give you enough rope to hang yourself. Watch out. <laughs> you know, but it, it, bre- it really bred a strong um, ownership feel to the, the, uh, the people there, and yeah. and also, um, it's like an autonomy. It's a it's like Dan Pink's book Drive. You give people a, uh, an autonomy at work. It seems okay. Yeah. And it didn't also. Uh, I also baked uh, bread in our commercial kitchen there. We built a commercial kitchen in this old building. I mean, we had a, a really elaborate setup. Man, it was like twenty seven thousand square feet, all wow. brick, and hardwood floors. Um, it was a really inviting place to be for the employees and, and the customers. And that, that was a big part of it um, in keeping people really excited about the shop. Also having this commercial kitchen, I mean, it was like amazing, like cedar, all built out, really nice. Um, and we had, you know, uh, ovens and everything. It wasn't yeah. like a microwave in the corner, man. This yeah. is like a killer, like $35,000 on a, you know, with my drunk contractor buddy building it out. Um, <laughs> Uh, killer kitchen, amazing kitchen. It was like the show yeah. point of the entire building. And yeah. so I'd cook for everybody on, on Fridays. A lot of times I'm in there roasting a roast beef and then slicing mm. it on the bun and, you know, and had getting the hungry. Going. Yeah. Oh dude, that's the thing. Those employees forever, that experience will always, there's no boss that will ever compare to me in there with my apron, slicing off roast beef for a man. Here you go, bro. Here you go. Take a break from shipping, dude. Have one of these. This is what Arby should be doing right now, baby. <laughs> but you know, this is the deal, man. My fresh, you know, au with my onions and whatever. Oh, man, so good. So, Travis, it makes me think. So, if you were to start an e-commerce business now, what would you do? What would you start? Hmm. I just want some roast beef. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a couple ideas. Um, the one I'll share, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, really... It, sorry, it's trendy and it's what's happening right now. It's just dropship, dropship only. It's boring to me, and that's another reason why I haven't done it. Um, what do you mean, dropship only? Uh, get dealerships of you know, find dropship suppliers, and um, like you can do like Salehu or whatever, uh, or, or there's a couple of places out there that'll kind of get you training wheels to get started on dropshipping, mm-hmm. and you get an order management software and a, some kind of a turnkey website um, that's scalable. Um, again, something like Volution, something that's you know fifty bucks a month or whatever. It's cheap. It's all hosted. It works. Plug in your data. Plug in your dropship information. Um, you can dropship right out of Volution, actually, mm-hmm. uh, as part of our segue here. And it, that's you know that's an easy, cheap model. It'll make money. You can do it at your house. You don't have to have a warehouse. And you can, if you want to bring it to that level where you get yeah. a warehouse, you start stocking things. Great. But well, there's a lot of people out there just doing dropship only. Yeah. And they're making a lot of money doing it. You know, what would you dro- if, what would you drop ship? Rubber duckies? I don't know. I don't know. Refrigerators. You'd be surprised no, at the weird stuff people are drop shipping out there. But yeah, you're right. I mean, you do need to think about um, high. You know, you want to be drop shipping high value light things. I mean, really, but that's 
that could be part of the formula, but it's, um, you know, there's a lot of people bringing in containers of Chinese crab. Uh, I, I mean, everything's made in China, I guess, whatever, but that's, that doesn't interest me either, you know, personally. Yeah. Um, it's not like I'm uh, on my soapbox here about it, but it's, I, I don't know. The, the, the cool thing about e-commerce for me, it was a vehicle to, um, I'm not a philanthropist, but it was this vehicle to have this really cool team of people to work with, right. make some money, um, and like just blow my customers away. Yeah. You look at the reviews for Paradise Fibers when I was involved, when I was involved, <laughs> did I say that? They're amazing. All the way, it's five stars forever. This, this place is awesome. And you'll see my name mentioned. You'll see you know, a lot of the team members mentioned my name because it was a personal experience when you shop right. with us. And that's, right. I mean, that's, a, that's a fun thing. And, and I try to, uh, when I'm consulting with people, hopefully they kind of, you know, some of that rubs off on them. And it's mm-hmm. not all about profit. And that's kind of a personal thing for me um, right. or then the money making side. Yeah. I just figured where, if you were to do an e-commerce from yarn, where do you go from yarn? You know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. We'll think about that. So let's go to whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it the software showdown. You're going to call it the shootout comparison shopping cart, whatever. So... Just talk about um, whatever you want to compare with. I know I had listed Big Commerce, Magento, Shopify, and then obviously Volusion. Which which you want to start with? Advantages, disadvantages, what you like, what you don't like. Okay. Um, the like one of the biggest things that you got to consider, uh, especially if you're going to look at Magento, is the hosting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, price is one thing, right? <clears throat> and Magento actually offers CE Community Edition. Um, and there's EE Enterprise Edition, Community Edition. People don't. They're like, oh, it's free. It must be crap or something or what? How, how does that work? Well, it's <laughs> it's open source, right? Right. Um, so you can uh, basically they're they're throwing it out there, kind of in this like this permanent beta test for people to uh, use for free and to get feedback and to have people work on it. Um, and, you know, developers develop extensions for it, make it more popular. And then as it gains, you know, as, as this fledgling grows up, they start to charge more money for it or charge some money for it or they, they're making money in different ways. But it's typically, I mean, that's, it's, it's a strange model. It's really weird, but CE is free. Yeah. Um, and, and EE, and there's no support or anything. You're on your own, man. You got the software yeah. and good luck. Install right. it on whatever Linux or whatever or whatever you're going to put it on and whatever OS you want to try to launch it on, they've got a white paper on it and it's pretty elaborate. I don't, I don't know much about that side of it. I just let, let my developer people deal with that. And right. um, there's actually, even your developers that are really experienced, they won't be able to set it up properly. Um, and they, yeah. they could probably do okay. But there's no way that you're going to do that personally. You got this free software. Just forget about it. It's not happening, man. It's going to be very difficult for you to set that up. Right. It's never for, free because you're yeah. going to spend hours and then you're going to have to redo it. Right. Now, set, there's two things of setup for uh, CE. You're setting it up on your host, a hosting environment, which is really difficult. You need to have a professional help you with that. It's going to be 200 bucks a month for some kind of a service, and you can plug that in. <clears throat> um, that's free software, so it's, it's kind of cool. That can work. Mm-hmm. And then you have the other side of setting it up where... Um, you need to get your attri- get your mind wrapped around the attribute set thing and attributes and how that relates to the products you're going to sell. Um, and that goes for, of course, uh, enterprise as well. That's a big deal. Now, enterprise is like 18 grand a year or something like that. You got to call them for a quote and uh, do some messing around. Once you get that, again, you just have software. They're not hosting it for you. Uh, oh, really? So- Even at that <laughs> price level? <laughs> uh-uh. And it's 18 grand a year. So why do people do out. it then? Because it's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. And the support now is a lot better for Magento. Um, I'll throw that out there. The Magento support's been freaking awful for a long time. It's a joke, and it's it's gotten a ton better. So anyway, I don't want to dwell on Magento too much there, but that's um, – and, and the hosting for Magento, typically uh, when you say enterprise, everything doubles. Um, kind of like Pro Tools when you're – if you're an audio guy, uh, yeah. your extension or your plugins for Pro Tools are like double uh, – so extensions are double or more. Hosting's more. Hosting's like three times as much. So it's about 650 bucks through Nexus every month. 
Um, yeah. So you got the eighteen grand a year, six hundred fifty bucks a month. That's just getting started. So it's you're not be like developing three anything. grand a month ish. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so that that's significant when we're talking about. And I want just want to preface that out there that Magento is a big deal to get started. Right. <clears throat> it's awesome, and I'm gonna talk about all these other features that it's got when yeah. I compare it to the other two. And you're gonna go, oh, why would anyone do anything else? Well, there's what level? Yeah, what level would someone's business have to be at for them for you to tell them to consider it? Their budget, mainly. If they got the budget, like I'm doing a build out right now, it's pretty much zero to sixty. Um, that someone had this like Shopify site that was clunky and <clears throat> not a big Shopify fan, and we're taking that thing and plugging in, building out an entire killer suite of Magento. Um, for with ev- all my best practices built in, everything's baked in, man. Mm-hmm. All the extensions that I love, all my partners, everything's are, and they've got a decent budget, and it's going to rock. Uh, that's going to be my new case study. Um, look for that, you know, over the next eh, probably be six months. I want to let those guys get some really good traction, but they're basically starting from nothing, mm-hmm. uh, and we'll get those guys rocking uh, anyway. So, uh, as far as uh, evolution and what you know, how you're going to start out. Magento is not a scalable platform. It's really not. I don't consider it a scalable platform. It's either go big or go home. You can do CE on 200 bucks a month or whatever, but like for beginners, it's a lot of work. I would much rather see a client of mine, if they're like, hey, I want to get into your commerce. I want to have some kind of a mid-level package, put mm-hmm. something together for me, whatever. Okay, you can go with Volution. And Volution has this turnkey setup. They'll do the graphics for you if you pay them a little extra money, a couple grand, three grand or something. They'll do custom graphics for your whole website. Come up with all the stuff. They'll do your logo even. Whatever, let's throw it in. It's, it's just happening. And you may not have any branding skills or even know what you want, kind of. They'll just do it. They'll also do your AdWords for you. You can plug that in. They'll also do, um, uh, I think, remarketing. They'll do Facebook, tie it into Facebook. Volusion will stuff. do all that. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. And it's not like the best on the planet, but it's pretty good. Right. You know, they do a pretty good job. And located down in Austin, too, which I like. Um, and, and so... I like Stubbs, actually, barbecue in Austin. That's what I'm thinking about now. Stubbs. Are they oh, behind the gas station? Uh, it's in a weird part of town. Okay. I've been there once. Okay. I was <laughs> just there, so. It has, like, this big amphitheater out back. Yeah, where, I don't like, think I went to Stubbs. I think some and... people mentioned it, but we didn't end up going there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a cook. <laughs> That's. Did you see, you know, the bottle of Stubbs barbecue sauce? That's where it comes from, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good barbecue sauce. Anyway, yeah. all right. So now we're way off track. Big Commerce or Volution. These are the I think Big Commerce is also in Austin, right? I don't know. I I'm more familiar with Volution. I've used them. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Volution and Big Commerce are great solutions to scale up on. Uh, that's a big difference between Magento. You can start small, go to this small monthly fee, yeah. and um, as you grow, they're going to charge you more. <clears throat> and you can also add features. Yeah. Uh, add third parties. Add ex- they, they got a small, smaller amount of extensions and third parties, much smaller than Magento. Yeah. Um, much, much less elaborate. Um, and they're going to cost you more SaaS model wise because they're not getting that much up front from you. So a lot of that happens. Uh, they're going to get you with the SaaS model stuff um, for extensions and extra functionality all, all over the place, unfortunately. But you get to start out small with the scalable, um, you know, based on like how many. Uh, gigs you're using and whatever else, and it's right. they're gonna it's gonna seem like they're overcharging you too. But you gotta remember, you got to start from like nothing, you know, with right. twenty, what, fifty bucks a month or something for Volution for, right. and you get a lot of functionality out of that. Um, <clears throat> so another big difference between Volution and Big Commerce, yeah, uh, especially for guys just starting out. Um, I've got I had a client that came to me and was like, hey, I wanted I kind of want to do Magento, but I don't really know what I'm doing essentially, right, and. Um, you know, but that's just what it was. And I'm like, uh, you know, they're, they're just kind of, a, they're, they're, they're an intermediate e-commerce skill level. Hmm. And they didn't want to have my team on board a ton for the implementation. I said, right. dude, don't do Magento. You're going to have to go with big commerce, I think. And they've got a similar feature set. Not everything Magento's got, but it's based off the Magento Go uh, platform, which is right. now defunct. And, uh, Big commerce will hold your hand through all of it. Yeah, that's the cool part. Um, yeah. A lot like Volution, they're going to build out all the customizations that you need, or involve the third. They'll get the third parties on, uh, involved for you. Make sure everything works. They'll host it for you, and they'll the. It's kind of like a hosted Magento kind of 
with less features and less yeah. capability. Not a lot less, but there's certain things that are really important in Magento that it doesn't have. Uh, and anyway, that's it's a great way to get started. And they can build out. They've told me I haven't been there yet, but they've told me that they can build out pretty much everything that you that you want in Magento for the most part. Big and there's a couple things. Can. Yeah, so I mean, they can pretty much do. It's more money, um, you know, and the, uh, it's hosted. It's um, it's going to be probably overall it'll be cheaper than Magento to implement, and you can take it a step at a time and a bite at a time. You can even start mm -hmm. with their. Uh, non-enterprise solution. And the enterprise solution, I should be clear, <clears throat> what I've been talking about is the enterprise solution for big commerce with all the customizations. Um, and the, their standard package is a little limited. And that's kind of, it's at the same level as Evolution or one of the other, you know, mm -hmm. carts that are similar mm -hmm. to that. Why were you recommending big commerce over Evolution in that circumstance? Um, okay, so they wanted, they had the budget to go big, and they were an established e-commerce company. They just didn't have that the e-commerce skills really, or right. the team to back up a Magento installation. Right, and so, um, and they didn't, and actually, they didn't necessarily want to exploit all the features that I really wanted them to exploit. They weren't comfortable with all of it, or they just didn't quite get it. I don't. Uh, that's the only way I can say it. Um, not all clients are going to go, hey, that's a great idea. You know, and it's like, even if I've done it and I have the experience, I've done it with my store that I had, done it with other clients. I've seen other clients do it and I suggest it to them. They sometimes just won't do it. Right. And so there's a couple of things that this client um, didn't want to do with Magento. And I said, you know what? And they didn't have the skill level. That was the biggest thing or the team to back yeah. up Magento. Yeah. You know? So you liked in that circumstance Big Commerce over Volution, even though they're both hosted. You thought Big Commerce had more features that they could use yeah they can go they could grow further with big commerce for sure mm -hmm. and now volution has there's there's no real straight path between volution and their big brother system which is mozu mozu is a completely custom thing that's basically kind of like big commerce enterprise and they're this omni channel thing that is it's pretty amazing it looks great i haven't got anybody to to uh, i haven't had a need to go there yet yeah but I did get a demo on it and, and looked around, and it looks really cool, mm -hmm. um, given it's going to be all custom. Yeah. And it's a hosted solution. It's very expensive, um, similar to a big commerce kind of thing, a hosted uh, enterprise solution, mm -hmm. you know, in the Volution scheme of things. And it's right. built, you know, of course, it's a, it's a Volution product. Okay. So that's big commerce versus Volution. And then you're going to talk about, because still I'm, uh, with Magento, you're going to talk about why you love it so much and why people should go with it. But first, talk about your non-love for Shopify. Mm. Okay. Because a lot of people obviously are on Shopify too. Yeah, layered navigation, man. Or faceted, uh, what do they call it? Faceted filtering, faceted uh, navigation, I guess they're calling it. Um, and, and what it is, is basically it's a, a, a real solid filtering system based off of attributes. <clears throat> so it's going to be basing your, um, typically on your left column, there's going to be have like a drill down. Um, like if you have a particular attribute of whatever you're looking for within a category, click it and it'll narrow your search. So there's a way you can do that in Shopify, which is kind of ghetto and you can like tag stuff. But it's not really the deal, man. I started looking at that, and I, you know, that was a big boon for me with um, Shopify. And with the way Magento does it, it's so clean and it works great. And it's powerful. And it really helps people find stuff, you know. People can't find stuff on your yeah. site. Um, so you don't like simple, that right? it's not easy to find things or to search certain attributes on Shopify. Right. And it doesn't have uh, the segmentation thing's another really big deal. Um, with an enterprise class uh, platform like Magento. Um, and it's, it's for big boys. Magento is for big boys. It's for people that know what they want yeah. and they're power users. Um, and, and, you know, when I'm putting this together for a client who wants to really get to the next level, that's what I'm looking for. Now, with Magento, what I'm, and, and to go into kind of more detail, um, with the segmentation, <clears throat> so if someone has a certain, um, all the way through, there's no real way in Shopify to do a proper segmentation at all. Out of the box, it doesn't have anything. Um, you can get an extension to do it for a SaaS model, and these third parties will kind of put some kind of haphazard setup together for you that will kind of email them what they want. 
Um, you know, you can kind of segment your emails and segment. Um, I think that's about as far as it goes. It may do banners, but I doubt it. I looked at it and was not impressed and bailed out. Uh, the Magento, what it will do, and this is what I'm talking about, you can, based off of pretty much any customer behavior you can possibly dream of, you can put together a rule um, <clears throat> in Magento. So like if someone's got something in their shopping cart, like it's a big dollar item, like thousand dollar item or something in their shopping cart um, or in their wish list even, and they haven't checked out yet, or maybe they abandoned their card or all these different things that they may do, customer may do, you can present them with an email, go try to round them back up with this kind of abandoned card email. That's not a big deal, but that's something you can do. And you can present it with the items that they were looking at or with items that are maybe similar um, and a lot of these things you can automate in Magento, by the way, in Enterprise. It's got a lot of automation, things like mm-hmm. that, like automatic related products and things like that based off of rules you set up. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, uh, you've got like you can present them with a banner. Like, so if this person's got this thousand dollar item in their, their cart and they're hemming and hawing, they're kind of they're not checking out yet. And it's you're thinking, dude, they're not going to make it. <laughs> let's give them. Let's give them free shipping, man. We're not doing free shipping. Let's do free shipping. So, boom, free shipping coupon comes up because they've waited a certain amount of time. Um, and that's that's a big deal, man. You can do, based off of what you know about the customer, if you're smart about it and you set it up right, hmm. you can incentivize people to check out and close them and in- increase your conversion rate. You might give a little away. Whatever. I mean, that's yeah. that's part of the deal, though. You, What are you giving away if they bail? You know? Right. I mean, if you you get your conversion rate up a little bit, um, that's going to exponentially improve your bottom line, and then you're getting you've got this chance to keep these customers coming back. Yeah, so you can set up some automated rules in the system really well with Magento, is what you're saying, right? Relating to segmentation and um, and there's also other things like automated banner presentation. Like you can put together uh, your sales banners for six weeks out and have a calendar set up. You know what you're rolling out. Well, guess what? Then you go into your remarketing, set that up, have those, and and you've got your remarketing schedule going out with like AdRoll or somebody, and those are all going to coordinate. So you're sending the same message on all your channels, and bef- I, I really screwed that up early in the early days. I'd have all these different coupons going on, just everywhere, just kind of like shotgunning, and I figured out that it was way more effective to have one really good special that was to a large part of our you know customer base. Mm-hmm. And you could even have maybe two specials or something, you know, but don't have different coupons all over the place at different times. Have them all coordinated. Um, that's a really good strategy that I found that's that's really worked a lot, yeah. um, you know, in the past. Yeah. At what level of business do you think that it's a no-brainer for someone to just do the Magento Enterprise? Like, is it, oh, when you hit $5 million, you're processing $5 million a year? Or what, mm-hmm. what level is it, listen, from Travis... This is a no-brainer. You need to be going with Magento Enterprise. Right. Uh, I would say, yeah, $5 million is actually on the – that's what I was going to say. I uh, took the words out of my mouth. So that's – and and also you need to have the infrastructure set up. So like when I, I'm getting in there, starting up something with Magento, I'm putting in um, – <clears throat> what I do is part of my secret sauce is, hey, create you know a shop owner or – head of tech or whoever I'm working with there, my liaison at the company, hey, uh, here's an invite to Asana. And I get them, you're working with me and Asana, and they see how I'm doing it, and they see how we're doing it with some of these other third parties. You tie, tie in my developers, tie in some of my other guys, and then his team start to involve his mm, team. Mm, yeah, yeah. And then by the end of the, by the, end of the you know, three-month or six-month engagement, I've weaned them off. And they they're doing their own project management, yeah. you know, and that's part of kind of my startup with a comprehensive plan to, um, you know, bring companies to the next level, uh, you know, whether it's workflow or workflow or communication yeah. or you know with the project management stuff, um, you know, proper delegation and accountability is a big part of the project management thing. Um, but checking off, you know, hey, it's not assigned to three people; it's assigned to one person, and that's you, dude. You've got to get that done. <laughs> Sorry. So, Travis, I know you started to do this monstrous, epic post. Anything from that that you we didn't talk about with Big Commerce versus Magento versus Shopify versus Volusion that you want to include? <laughs> There's a ton. Okay, I'm just looking over my uh, yeah. sort of my matrix that I put together we'll here. Called the <clears throat> matrix. It is. Yeah, yeah, it's the cart matrix. Um. 
Okay, so one of the other big things um, with, gosh, I'm just toting Magento. I find myself just toting Magento over and over again here. Um, there's a lot of details here, but some of it is the, is another really important part of this um, is the discounting mechanism. So you're going to be offering your customers discounts. I don't care who you are. If you're not, silly. Um, <laughs> It really is, and and so you've got to do something. You got to give them a free gift. You got to give them ten percent off, free shipping, something, whatever. Um, and Magento will allow you to do that in a ton of different ways with a ton of control, <clears throat> and you can uh, you can get really creative with it. Buy two of this product, get one free, whatever. And the auto add to cart type of functionality is just killer. That's awesome. That's an extension you're gonna have to buy with Magento, but it's not that big a deal. It's like three hundred bucks. Um, and those type of things, you get creative with that and your customers, you keep them excited and keep them coming back. Um, Volution, it's not going to happen, man, unless you're going to go crazy with maybe getting somebody to build it out for you, reinventing the wheel. There's no reason to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to just move on when it's time and, and you can get really big with Volution. You can get, you can do 5 million. There's people doing a lot more than that with Volution. You know, if, if you're content with it and you don't want to make the change, you don't want to go crazy making all these extra, you know, uh, making some insane company you know, and getting really huge. And some people actually don't want to do that. They're totally content with just playing it safe and not going, you know, taking a bunch of uh, new initiatives on. Um, So that's, that's a big deal. Big commerce uh, will have some of that functionality. They can build out some of it for you too. So you can get, again, that's something that's going to be in the enterprise version of big commerce. Um, Both of those platforms are mainly going to be using like 10% off or, or you can do a percentage off of like a product. You can do free shipping. That's it. That's pretty much it, man. You mm-hmm. know, for discounts. And there's there's probably <clears throat> there's hundreds of different discounts you can do with Magento. I can't even mention them all here. But there's a, I mean, there's there really is a, pretty much. And if you can dream it up, you can think about it. You think up the discount, man. You just got to program it right. There's a bunch of rules that you'll have to set up, and you can do it even based off of uh, different customer groups in Magento. Yeah. I could go on all day, man. Yeah. It's it's uh, very powerful. I mean, when I think of getting a, a piece of software or a shopping cart, I always think of what's the one thing that will make the whole thing worthwhile? You know, like with Skubana, the fact that it does automation for me, done deal. Like that, it makes it all worthwhile. What is it with Magento? Obviously, that's your favorite. That's why I say it. That makes it all worthwhile to go with Magento. I mean, I don't have any stake or, you know, stock in Magento. I'm just, I feel I'm like just, I do. I'm yeah. just going off uh, what your preference is because it seems like that's where you think that people will get the most bang for their buck. Yeah, at a certain level. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because you won't get that unless you've got a lot of products and you're for, right. pretty far along. Right. Or you've got, you know, the budget to launch it properly. Yeah. Um, I guess that's... It probably is the discounts. Like someone and, comes then, to you, they're doing, let's say, $10 million a year, and you're like, this seems like this is a no-brainer. What's going to push them over the edge? You'd be like, oh, yeah, this one feature is going to pay for all the headache and hard work in switching. Uh, the segmentation, and I've kind of gone over how global that really is and how many things it ties into. Mm -hmm. The segmentation is probably the one thing that I really, really like, um, combining that with, and the other thing is the layered nav, Mm -hmm. Uh, the ease of shopping. That's terrific. Um, and overall it's just so much more customizable, um, than any of the other platforms I've worked with. Yeah. Especially these other two are comparing. Yeah. (laughs) Anything else you want to mention on your matrix? That would be important. Um, reporting. <clears throat> That's one thing Magento just fails at, and there's nothing there. Um, it's There's some weak sauce, um, you know, extensions you can get, and you can do some reporting there, but it's not much. Um, Big Commerce and Volution have some reporting there. It's average, yeah. uh, out of the box. It's better than Magento, though, uh, which is surprising. That's mm. one of the things that Magento kind of failed on, um, and I'm sure there are uh, cringing right now. Um, my buddy over there is certainly cringing, but that's that's what it is. So they just don't have it, um, and it doesn't do it. I like to say it does everything, but that's something that I, when I was creating my matrix, I really yeah. I found that it didn't. It really reporting just, is could be big. Like what what does big commerce report on that Magento doesn't? 
just general sales reports, man. What products are selling well? What's um, uh, you know some customer data? Um, and it's not going to go. It's not elaborate reporting. <clears throat> Neither of the systems are Volution or, or um, Big Commerce. Um, in the reporting that I relied on uh, in my e-commerce journeys has been through my order management system. Yeah. So like Suvana might have that. Exactly, you know? yeah. Um, I would rely on those guys for that or get a third party that hooks onto the database for that depending on yeah. you know how that's going to integrate. Yeah. But that's it's, that's a whole other side of yeah. things, uh, the reporting part, you know. Yeah, oh, for sure. Anything else from the Matrix? Oh, I've got another, another uh, bad spot for Magento. Um, the built-in search. Built-in search is awful with hmm. Magento. Uh, is is there a gotta, plugin that you can use for that? Yeah. Yep. I would recommend like uh, getting a SaaS model, like uh, something like Nextopia. Nextopia is really good. It just works, and they hmm. put it in for you, and um, it's expensive. It's like three hundred bucks a month, three hundred fifty hmm. bucks a month, but it it works great, and um, you know you'll have great luck with it, and you'll see sales going up right away. Hmm. Um, yeah, now, search other, is huge. Oh man, and, and there's stuff out there like Search Spring, I think it is, or something, and that's something I would stay away from. They're way overpriced and goofed up. Yeah. They've goofed up a couple of my clients right now. Yeah. Um, don't recommend it. Sorry, sorry, Search yeah. Spring. Um, I usually and, use uh, Swift Type, but I think it's only for WordPress sites. Have you heard of that? Mm -mm. And there, and e-commerce searching is a little different. I yeah, mean, you're, sure. Because you're doing a different type of, um, you know, which field are you going to try to to get to and <clears throat> and there's if you if you go through a bunch of work and you set up the Magento search properly you you can get something out of it for sure um, but I would really recommend getting a third party if you're doing Magento make sure you get uh, an extension like maybe by a Masty or somebody a Masty's got really good extensions um, for the search and it's not expensive it's like three hundred bucks or something yeah five hundred five so what are the, some of the ones people should look at for search. Uh, Nextopia is great, and that you can plug that into any of those three platforms: the Volution, yeah. Big Commerce, or Magento. Um, Big Commerce does not have a good search f function either. It's well, they're. I would say they're good. <laughs> it's it's better than Magento for sure, and Volution is actually very good. Yeah, both both of those, and I haven't played with Big Commerce much, but the little I did, it seemed to work fine. Um, but I, I know Volutions is actually really good right out of the box, mm -hmm. um, and um, you know they've they've improved. Uh, they've kind of moved forward with with their platform as far as that goes. And Magento just has it; they just don't care. Um, and they've got you can get Solar for it, S O L R. Uh, I don't know what that acronym stands for, but um, search something. And it's it's a uh, sort of an alternate search you can get, and you can set that up. Now your developer's going to have to set it up, man. It's this is all custom stuff. Yeah. So like out of the box, when you plug in your enterprise Magento setup, it's crap. You go to search for something, and you're like, this is this is awful. I just paid eighteen grand for this. And um, it's really it's depressing um, how bad it is out of the box. It, it, that's the whole thing with Magento Enterprise. You got to have some help. You got to have people set it up. Uh, they know what they're doing. Yeah. Know? But searches, yeah, it's trouble. So you're gonna have to get Nextopia or get like something from maybe a, a Masty plugin for that. Mm hmm Okay. Anything else from the Matrix? Um, comparison shopping engines. That's probably the last thing I would mention. Um, yeah. <clears throat> The uh, Volution has turnkey set up for that, so they're ready to go uh, for all the different shopping engines you might want to push stuff out to, which is great. Uh, really easy for new merchants to get going and push your, you know, get out to these other affiliated um, networks or whatever. And then, um, actually, that's so, well, okay. It, Big Commerce and Volution will both do that out of the box. Uh, Magento needs to be set up. It's more powerful with Magento. You can do a much cooler adapt faster for different feed types. Um, and you're kind of stuck with Volution and Big Commerce if the uh, the feed requirements change for like Google Shopping, and a lot of experienced um, e-commerce folks will be like cringing right now because those those uh, feed specs change, and what um, the PLAs value, uh, the Google Shopping um, system values, when those change, it screws up your PLAs really bad and right. just sets like shockwave through everybody's um, PLA numbers and goose you all up. So and you're not all of a sudden you're not coming up for results that you used to come up for, mm. and you're, even though you're paying for it, right? <clears throat> um, because you're not providing them the right data, or they just pull your PLAs all together because you're missing data, and you now you need to fill in more data and or improve your picture size or whatever else you got to do. 
And you can quickly change that kind of stuff with the more powerful um, feed generator, which you can have in Magento. It's cheap. Uh, just take some configuration and set up. And you can quickly say, oh, you know what? Wait, we're going to change. We'll send this field now. And you can have that field filled out in Magento, map it, boom. It's really easy for power users to, to do that. Now, you're stuck with Volusion or Big Commerce. Yeah. If those changes come out, you can't change it with those two platforms at all. You have to wait for Volusion to catch up. Mm. You know, or Big Commerce to catch up. That could up. be painful for people. <laughs> that's one of the that's the kind of situation you get in with these kind of like one size fits all scalable beginner platforms that are only they're not charging very much. Right. You know, they're kind of stuck on they're they're catering to everybody. And they've got so many things that they're trying to do for everybody, make everybody happy, all under one roof. That you know, if, if something comes out and they've got to be, they're just not nimble. It's a that's a big you know ship to steer. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can go on all night, Travis, with uh, e-commerce questions, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you sharing your thoughts on the big commerce, Magento, Shopify, Volusion and everything else it's been hugely valuable people should check out sharp commerce and um where should people reach out to you if they are interested um in in talking to you where should they reach out uh you can get a hold of me through the website sharpcommerce.com and uh there's also a free tips newsletter i've got there you can sign up you'll get an annoying pop-up when you get there and don't be annoyed i'm just trying to make you money Put in your uh, name and email, and I will. I'll shoot you an email like once a week. I won't spam you, and uh, you'll get you know some tips. I'll fill. It'll make you money. I think that's what should be. I don't know what the current title is on the on the pop up, but I think that should be the title. Don't get annoyed. <laughs> this will make you money. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna update yeah, that tonight. Yeah, nice. Tested. I like it. Um, All right. Thank we'll do you. A/B so, testing. <laughs> thank you so much, Travis. I really appreciate it. It's been thank a blast. You, Thanks for having me. Yeah.